the plainest Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? I'm your girl, the plainest Jane. And let's see what's happening in these virtual streets. You ready? Mm. All right, now. <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. What up and welcome back. I'm Jane, the plainest Jane, and I provide syrup in the form of black news and celebrity updates. Listen, I'm back. It's been so long since I spoke to all of y'all. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. Find a seat on the bus. Listen, I know a lot of you all really enjoy <clears throat> uh, my commentary and my synopsis of, uh, what do we call her? Um, Alley Cat Wrong, a.k.a. Jaguar Right. Everything's incorrect about the way she lives her life and the delusions that reside in her head. However, okay, there are other things that need speaking about. Now, may I do a live on her and some other topics later today? Maybe, right? But there are other pressing issues in our community, right, that are happening that I really wanted to prioritize over her. Jaguar Right has taken a lot of people's attention. And don't, don't get me wrong. If you are members only backstage, I'm keeping you abreast with what's happening via members only community tab posts, right? And I'll tell you where to go and look for the extra syrup because I, I just can't give her all my time. Does she get me a lot of views? Hell yeah. Does she get me a lot of money? Absolutely. But Jaguar is not my passion and, and nor is it where my focus should remain. I might talk about it a couple times a month, but not, I just, I, I had to remove myself, right? Um, I, I still do find her to be a really interesting, polarizing conundrum, <laughs> but I got to talk about other things too. And, and most of what I'm passionate, I didn't start my YouTube journey to fixate on Jaguar, right? She was a craze a while ago. And now that she's evicted, arrested, uh, being extradited and all these other things, for me, a lot of the interest has come to a halt, it, which we all do what happened, Right. So we, we're, we're, we're still going to talk about her, right? I'm not abandoning y'all. I know I gained a good 2,000 or so of y'all because y'all cracked the hell up based off of my commentary and my rundowns and summaries of her, right? But um, please understand that we've got to talk about other things too. Yes? No? Okay? And to the people who felt like my last video, my mouth was a little too dirty, um, you know, defending yourself can get that way sometimes. Could I have given her a classy read? Yeah. Um, but every now and then, you know... Sometimes getting a little ignorant. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens, right? I might not even wanted to get that ignorant, but God damn it, it happened. Okay, and I stood up for my damn self. Hello. Oh, well, right? I saw so many people like, oh my gosh, she's got you cursing. Newsflash, I cuss all the time. I may not cuss as much as I cussed in that video, but I do cuss, baby. I do cuss. All right. And um, so that's that. But listen, if you have been living under a rock, then you don't know that Freak Nick has been trending all over again. Right. And, and honestly, Freak Nick has always been something. It's always been a cultural craze for us. Read the description box if you haven't already. Just a really nice brief write up about what Freak Nick is and, and really what it's about, okay? It's it's always been a bit of a nostalgic cultural craze in the Black community. The conversation surrounding, okay, this form of HBCU spring break picnic that later transformed into like this big block party and further transformed into like this mega festival that was actually worth traveling across the country for. It's had a massive resurgence thanks to an upcoming documentary that Hulu is slated to release. And it's going to be titled Freak Nick, The Wildest Party Never Told. Okay. Now, since the announcement last week, I do believe it was April 10th. 
since the announcement and release of the trailer, present day aunties, successful business women, moms, and even you know women politicians, they're holding their breath in apprehension for fear of what we may see on the 1994 Freaknik tapes. Okay, and listen, put up one in the chat if y'all are old enough to even remember VHS tapes. Because keep in mind, like, wasn't no camera phones, wasn't any of that back in that time. We had, well, we, baby, I was in my single digits. But they had camcorders, okay, back in that day and time. So put up one in the chat if you remember VHS tapes, all right, and rewinding them and how much of a hassle it was and how Blockbuster charged you an extra couple of dollars if you returned your VHS tapes, right? The in-store version of Netflix without rewinding them. It was definitely a time to be alive, okay? It was a time. It was a time. Now, there was a lot that went down at Freaknet, both good and bad, some in harmless fun, others in horror, okay? Um, assaults, grapes, minus the G, and even gun violence. They were being shot, okay? Now, despite the things that the Black women of Gen X experienced and may be fearful about, and even the horrors of some of us that came after Gen X really feel looking back at some of these tapes, Black men, some Black men, not all, some, zoom in on the some. Because we are not generalizing all Black men the way that some of these Black men are generalizing the accountability that some of us are trying to bestow upon the perpetrators of said assault, grapes, and gun violence that took place at the Freaknik. Stay with me now, okay? I really do want to know your thoughts on this. I'm going to open the phone lines and hopefully some of you all want to call in. It's definitely a debate, heated discussion. Keep in mind, everybody keep it respectful in the chat. I don't mind if you disagree with me. I don't mind if you disagree with other people down below in the comments. Just keep your discourse in your dialogue respectful, okay? There's no need to name call, okay? With the exception of the word freak, right? Only because this goes into the marketing of the event itself, okay? So if you want to call somebody freaky or a freak, all right, we can let that slide because what does what, what does the title of this event imply, right? What does it imply, right? Um, but what doesn't it excuse is assault um, and a lack of consent. It doesn't excuse that. But I think a lot of you all are mature enough to get the point, right? Come on in, have a seat. Are y'all excited for this video? Do y'all want to talk about it? Okay. Do y'all want to talk about this? I see some people in the chat saying, wake it up. Yeah, we're going to wake it up. We're going to talk about it. I was waiting on something that really pulled me to really wanting to talk about, as opposed to just going over things that I felt like or that I see trending. This is something that I do feel like is worth the discussion. And I've been writing this video um, since yesterday. Right. So I, I have some thoughts and I also want to hear your thoughts. Keep in mind as you comment, first of all, first of all, hold up. Skirt. Did y'all find a seat on the bus yet? Hit thumbs up on your way in. Have a seat. Shout out to everybody in the live chat. Shout out to Discord. We're going to get ready for takeoff. I see there are some people that want to call in. Do me a favor. Put a two in the chat if you're interested in calling in. That way I know how heavy the phone lines will be. Okay? Put a two in the chat if you are interested. Because I see some people in the chat saying that they were there. Okay? So let me know, find a seat on the bus. We are going to get ready for this, all right? I appreciate you all being here and um, allowing me to narrate my perspective of this conversation, although there's no changing the sequence of events and what actually happened down there at the Freak Nick, okay? So um, it's been like, has it been like a week and a day since I spoke to y'all? I think it's been a week and two days since I spoke to y'all. So I'm really excited to be back. I really, 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 really am. Okay. But we need to get into this this, this conversation because you got black men who claim, some black men who claim that they have, they've never been predators or engaged in any predatory behavior, but somehow they're taking imaginative stray bullets <laughs> for something that they weren't a part of, they weren't old enough to attend, and men that they don't even know, okay? 
So I think that we may have an after show on the backup channel. And I think we might come back over to this channel because we do need to go over some of those text messages between R. Kelly and his the star witness of his New York trial, Azriel Clary, and the text messages between him and his mama, between her and her mama. Grotesque, disgusting, horrifying. You all know how I feel about Robert. He's scum. But that doesn't mean that some of his victims' mamas weren't scum as well. If you're a channel member, you already know we went over some of the more poignant messages in that 300, 400 page document that, you know, gave us individual text messages between Azio Clary and her mom when she was 15, 16, a minor. Go sit on that man's lap, seduce him, wear your hair like this. He want to F you. You need the da-da-da. Oh, disgusting okay despite me not liking robert don't think that i'm not gonna highlight the other side of things because i am okay i am okay they said whose mom was doing the butterfly down at the freak nick you know sometimes i have a hard time distinguishing the difference between the butterfly and the tootsie roll because i feel like they similar dances i do <laughs> That might tell you how young I am. Shout out to Texas Pride for joining the membership. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for coming to Backstage Sticky. Don't forget to check the members only community tab for all of your members only posts and videos, stuff that everybody outside of the paywall cannot see. Okay. So the difference was backwards and forward. Okay. 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 All right, we're going to go ahead and get into it. We are about 12 minutes in. Let me write down this timestamp so I can create some chapters. When, um, as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to create chapters to make it easier for you all to go back and watch some of this stuff if you miss the bus, which means you're not on the bus. But also, keep in mind, anytime you're watching my video and you leave a comment, sometimes I have no clue what part y'all talking about. The video will be over an hour long. And y'all comment about one statement that I made in like an hour and a half. And I'm like, I have no clue what you're talking about. Leave a timestamp when you comment, okay? Not saying you got to leave all the timestamps and separate the... If you're going to leave a comment about something that was said or a point that was made, just leave a timestamp. It'll really help me understand you and other people that come behind you commenting to understand exactly what it is that you are referencing as well. We are driving this bus on this good Sunday. I'm picking y'all up after church. Is y'all ready? Why y'all trying to go to Red Lobster? Baby, we too old for Red Lobster. We not, we not doing Red Lobster. We not doing Old Country Buffet no more. We might do a little bit of Golden Corral, but baby, let's go to Texas Roadhouse instead. Let's go to Texas Roadhouse instead, okay? Level up. <laughs> after church vibes. Because some after food, some after church food, it just be getting too, too repetitive, too too mushy and i'm so sorry for the senior citizens that need soft food for the sake of their dentures and things like that but listen let's let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and pull this bus off and let's get started have a seat hit thumbs up and drop some pancakes down below let go the plane is jane this is one of my favorite comments here she says i love me some black and she said loves me <laughs> some black news she says is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out All right, so we are back. Let's get into the meat and bones of this situation where we are. We are around about 14, 15 when we got started, okay? So we warmed up the bus. We waited for everybody to get here. And if, listen, listen, chase the bus at this point because we're pulling off, okay? So um, real quick, I hope y'all are feeling all right. I hope your mental health and everything is intact. Your invisible problems. I hope you're feeling all right. Shout out to all of the new subscribers. And of course, before I get into breaking down today's top 10 viral events, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But don't forget to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. So this Freak Nick documentary, um, I chose these pictures intentionally. Hey, Ahmad. Hey, hey, hey. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much for sending the the super sticker, the super chat. So I chose these images um, intentionally 
just to help people understand what the vibe was, what's the frequency, and just because women are dressed this way, because a lot of people feel entitled to a woman in booty shorts, they equate it to, well, she was clearly trying to give something up. Well, why was she dressed that way to begin with? Listen, Gucci Kata's don't mean that you have the right to revoke consent because you're an incel and you never get any. That's not what that means. That's not what that means. But a lot of the outfits were similar to this and this sort of behavior, right? So while I don't take the stance of blaming victims for what they have on, okay? Um, that's not what I do. That's just, that's not what I do. All right. But let's talk about it because I do find, excuse me, I do find the apprehension. This documentary has been met with a lot of apprehension. The aunties and Gen X women, they speak out. And, and I know a lot of you have had to have seen this, this, the, the, the video referencing this already where the, the, the auntie, she, maybe she's scared. She's like, I was there in 1994 and I'm afraid for what might happen should this thing come on out, okay? So I think it's only fair, even though I feel like a lot of y'all have seen it at this point. Most of y'all have seen this video at this point, but let's listen to why some of the um, middle-aged women, aunties, whatever you want to you know, call them, why they are kind of apprehensive about this. And then we're going to continue, okay? And thank y'all for supporting and hit thumbs up. And as a matter of fact, please make sure you share this video. I think it's an interesting dialogue. If you have someone that you've been talking to or you see them on Twitter tweeting all the time and they've got really polarizing or strong thoughts about it, share this video with them. Like I said, I'm going to open the phone line so that you all can call in as well, okay? Y'all, I don't know. We might be in trouble. Did y'all see Hulu is about to release a documentary about 94 Freaknik? Yes, yes. 1994 Freaknik, yes. They are about to release a documentary. So um, I'm just... Now, I, I've been to several Freaknik's. 94 was one that I attended. Uh, so I'm, I'm just praying that Jesus be a fence. I'm praying that Jesus just be a big, tall privacy fence. That's my prayer this Easter, this Good Friday. That's my prayer. So, um, you know, I will say this, though. I will say this. Like, when they would bring out those video cameras and start recording, I immediately removed myself from the um, that situation. I never, ever, ever um, was okay with being recorded out there. So, um, hopefully that worked to my benefit. But, you know, you never know. You never know. So the only thing I got is if you see your girl in the documentary, hey, man, at least I'm fully clothed. At least all my clothes is on. That's that's all I got. That's, that's the best I got. But, yeah, y'all, they about to put our business out in the street. We about to, Some of us might be on TV. So get your parental controls together. And uh, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Okay, so that's that, okay? <clears throat> this documentary has some former participants and maybe even their children in so much fear because they remember that, like that alone implies what was y'all really doing out there? What was going on that was and was not consensual that, I mean, of course, you wouldn't want your kids, you wouldn't want your employer, um, you don't want any of your colleagues, acquaintances, or associates knowing, seeing, bearing witness to, pertaining to you, okay? Listen, I find some of this, I, I find a small portion of this to be funny. I do. I do because it's really interesting, right? The good thing about this documentary dropping is it, 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 it gives a home run to this notion that Gen X and the baby boomers tried to pretend like did not exist. I love it. I love that this new Freaknik documentary got the older generation shook. 
<laughs> because they always got something to say about us millennials and our open sexuality, but y'all was been on the handstand with that Harry on film back in the day. Try somebody else's generation, not mine. Now, am I, you know, I mean, everybody had a, a, a day, a time, a phase where they were a little more out there than, you know, but the, the way that the older generation likes to condemn us. Oh, oh and everything. Oh, Y'all just be out here. Back in my day, we didn't do that. Back, oh, oh, some of y'all are shook and the footage ain't even out here yet. What's really going on? Yes, y'all was. See, the difference is we do record everything. This generation and, uh, and all the ones, because I'm a millennial, Gen Z and everybody else or whatever, they record everything. And they use that to act like they wasn't doing stuff too. But baby, you forgot about them camcord. What? I wish I had something to kind of simulate. a, a cam Y'all, it was camcorders out there. See, y'all forgot. What no technology back in my day. So let me just lie and act like I've been a guard fear an evangelical woman all my life. Use a lie. You lied because technology wasn't as advanced, but it caught some of y'all. And this guy, some of y'all in a choke old. Some of y'all are afraid. Some of y'all are already preparing y'all kids and y'all employers. Hell, there's one group of notable women. One of them is a uh one of them is um She's a politician that makes way over a million dollars a year. Black woman, too. She didn't already file her lawsuit. Like, I didn't sign a media release. So, yeah, y'all better not release nothing, right? These, these women, they're moms, they're aunties. They're all types of things, okay? And the fact that they got y'all showing lawsuits because you know for facts y'all was there in 1994. Okay. No, some were still hairy back in the nineties. Some were. Don't I get it? Some people like to think, oh, the hairy, the hairy craze was only a seventy or eighties thing. No, 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 no. The difference between this generation and the former generation was wax waxing in general has been way more accessible to us millennials and up than it was for our parents back in the day. Some of us may remember, some may not. Don't act like well. Shameless confession. Sometimes, depending on how old you were, your parents used to walk around the house naked, did they not? Before they felt like you were too old to see that or some of them just didn't give a hell. Y'all want to act like all the Gen X was walking around ball cooch? Ha! No, they weren't. And I just sat at many a lunch table with my homegirls and my friends and talked about, you know, I'm so tired of my mom walking around. And we had sister circles about it. No, everybody in the 90s was not ball coochie. No, they wasn't. No, they was not. I just had to go ahead and put that up there real quick. Okay? <laughs> we was traumatized and we formed a support group. But moving on, if that ain't what we talking about. Shout out to the parents that kept it in the house and not on the streets at 1994 Freak. Shout out to them. Okay. Woo! Because it could have been on somebody's camcorder out there popping on top of somebody's hood of the car. Okay. It could have been. It could have been. It could have been. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Right? Damn. Like I said, what's really... What's really interesting about this, y'all y'all got me out here revealing some deep duck. Don't nobody send this to my mama, okay? Why you what say what happens in this house stays in this house? Well, I mean, I had to make a point for the people. Shoot. <laughs> okay, so honestly though, the 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 home run of the truth and and the 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 looking down on the younger generations for, for having a phase or a moment of time in their 20s or college life where they were out here being outwardly promiscuous, right? Even if it wasn't, it, like they were just in, in promiscuous activities, even if it wasn't actual sex and penetration. Y'all was out here wearing whole outfits too. 
Y'all was out here in coochie cutters bearing it all too. There was some older women in the markets and in the stores and in the different places where they walk, where you walked in and your outfit was like, damn, why they showing so goddamn much? Why they showing everything? Everybody went through a phase like that who was bought, birthed after the 70s, 80s. So stop acting like Gen X and, and, and yonder, right? Stop acting like y'all are holier than thou and y'all never went through nothing because the way this got y'all scared, it says a lot about what y'all were wearing and what y'all were doing. And in comparison to what's going on and everybody twerking on IG all the time and all this, mm -hmm, I don't really see much of a difference, you know? I don't, you know, you catch some of these celebrities, they be out here naked on the gram, twerking on the gram, but some people ain't bold enough to walk around like that out in the streets. But guess who was? Them people that was at 1994 Freaknik. Some people leave it at what's on the music video and in front of the lens, whereas so some of y'all were actually willing to walk out here doing all of that tip drill behavior back in 1994. And I'm talking to you, the people who are ashamed of Gen X and who were a part of that. Only the ones who are turning up a nose at the younger generation. I'm talking to y'all. Yeah, yeah, talking to y'all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Summer Cleopatra, for the nine uh for the 999 super sticker. I do really appreciate that. Okay. Someone says they was butt naked down there when I seen footage. Baby, I've seen a lot of the footages and it was wild. Some of it was consensual. The other stuff was horrific. And we're gonna get to that. We're going to get to that. Tip drill was the 2000s, but I'm talking about what tip drill was talking about. Those behaviors were going on back when our parents. Or, well, not my parents, baby. My mother's always been a square. Oh, and I do appreciate that about her. My mother was a square. That's why I named myself the plainest Jane, although some of y'all would disagree. But moving on, everything is all about sex for this generation, Gen X says. Oh, but y'all thought them VHS tapes were destroyed. You thought the footages of you doing this in 8K. Okay, not 8K. 4K. Okay, not 4K. 2K. Okay, 240 pixels. Y'all thought the footages of what y'all was doing in 240p was gone? Oh. Think again. They caught a lot of y'all in 240p. Did they not? Did they not? And now some of y'all are ashamed. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, uh, mm. <laughs> I don't <laughs> All generations get stupid. They make stupid decisions. And some of it is caught on camera, not just us. Y'all are no different, Gen X. Y'all are no different. The baby boomers are right on the cusp. It's 1964. Okay? They're afraid that their children in their workplaces are going to see those things. But on top of, and I just wanted to make that point because it's going to be an eternal point that we drive home when we catch the, the older generation looking down on us. Okay? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Barbara. Barbara, because I seen the footage in the, baby, Barbara, Bar, 1994, Barbara, you weren't an usher at the church. You weren't delivering them church announcements. You ain't always been of Jesus, of God. You didn't always put him first. Barbara, don't make me go get Shirley because Shirley said back when you had her man, you was just a cheap down the free. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Shout out to Joy to the world for sending the $10 super sticker. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. Okay. But look. It's, it's giving very much dark-sided, you know, hypocrisy energy. That's what it's giving. That's what it's giving. That's what it's giving, okay? But outside of the older generation, where it's going to force them to see themselves or their friends or their associates in the, in, in the mirror, it's going to force them to reflect and have a come to Jesus moment. I want to see which ones come on social media and say, look, 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 I can explain. But let me move past them, child. 
it's also going to make please please don't listen look Now, who the hell want to think of that? Now, who the hell? Who the hell? Please. <laughs> Please get on up out of here with this. I'm going to block you if you say it again. <laughs> Mustard, Please. Okay, now, mustard ribs, I'm gonna remember you. All right, now. <sighs> Stop. But no, outside of the older generation being clearly uncomfortable because they know what type of shenanigans they were involved in. It's also clearly making select black men uncomfortable. Because they'll have to face the ugly truth about some of their counterparts who have participated in this behavior, whether it been 1994, or they have friends and partners who behave this way present day. And I think it's uncomfortable for them to want to call these men out. I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think they're uncomfortable with holding their homies accountable and speaking out against people who do things like this, who they're friends with. They would rather just let it slide and let it let, let it slide under the radar. They would. They would. I'm going to find a comment. Um, this comment actually has its it, it 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 got the people going on Twitter for sure, okay. And okay, here we are. Let's go ahead and share the screen. Thank y'all for being here. Listen, if you haven't taken a moment to hit thumbs up, make sure you do so. We got two hundred um, thumbs up and four hundred and fifty four people watching. Please don't make me have to kick you off my bus. Hit that damn button and drop some pancakes in the chat, okay? Drop some pancakes in the chat. All right. Now, I want to get into this, right? So let's let's talk about where this thread begins. It's also supposed to document the fall of Freak Nick, which included a lot of sexual assault. I hope your OGs won't be on there either. Here is some of the firsthand accounts. Let's get into some of the actuals and the factuals from the people. And I did track down the woman who was a part of this, and she was interviewed for this documentary. I won't put her name out there, but she was a part of the 1994 Freaknik, and I'll just leave it there. As the news got around, it got bigger and bitter, bigger. Bigger. I think a different type of crowd and a different vibe started to take place. It wasn't fun. It started getting too big. And I think that people were flocking to Atlanta and it started getting sinister. It started getting too big. It started getting sinister. They said again. Another person says, at first it was chill. Guys would ask where you're from, what school you went to. It meant a fun weekend party in Atlanta. It eventually changed to a sex fest. It was the weekend guys knew they could get laid. It was the weekend guys knew they could get laid. Walking through Lenox Square might cause you to get violated. Might get your ass smacked and your boob grabbed. I don't want to say all dudes were like that, but there were some overly aggressive hounds lurking around down there. I heard stories when about women being graped, minus the G, which is really upsetting to hear that. It's really sad to me that things went that far. OK, so that's what was said. And then this person says it's also supposed to document the fall of Freak Nick, which included a lot of sexual assault. I hope your OGs won't be in there. Here are some of the firsthand accounts. OK. And so there was someone who tagged me. Where are they? OK, 
So someone tagged me and said, the plaintiff Shane, what is the whites equivalent to Freaknik? Because the media is about to make all black men into predators. I've got to take a poll right now. I've got to take a poll, right? Before I even go further. How many of you think that the release of this Freaknik documentary is about to paint all black men as predators? Put a five in the chat if you think that this Freaknik documentary is about to paint all black men as predators. Put a five. The alternative is put a six in the chat if you feel like this story needs to be told because it was ended based off of the sexual assault. And this isn't painting all black men as predators, just the ones on camera engaging in predatory behavior. Hey, Stacey Nelson TV. I see you popped in the chat. So I just want to let that sink in. I see a lot of fives. And honestly, I see a lot of sixes too. Well, I see more sixes than fives, but I won't, I won't act like the fives don't exist, right? So... Let's go ahead and play hypothetical semantics, right? And, and, and the what about isms of this, because this is a huge what about ism, right? Well, let's talk about the white predators, because this is about to paint all us black men as predators. Let's talk about the white. Men. And I mean, like, I'll answer your question the white equivalent is girls gone wild. That's the equivalent, right? However, there was a documentary done about that by the way, it's released around this time last year, literally April 23rd last year, right? At what point is deflecting and talking about white predators assisting with releasing the truth with predators who just so happen to be black at Freaknik? At, like, at, at what point Woodstock, Woodstock 99 too? Yes. At what point does talking about white predators really help add nuance to the conversation and allow victims to tell their stories and allow us all to really learn from all of the contributing factors that fed into the tragedy of what that is? At what point do you say, you know what, this man did this to me? What race was the guy? Black. Let's talk about the white ones, y'all. Let's talk about the white ones because the, the, the man who did this on camera in 4K, I'm sorry, 240p. So let's talk about the white ones. Like, at what point does this deflection work? At, at what point does it make sense? Because again, we can have a conversation about the white ones. They've already been exposed for their ridiculousness. And they were pretty similar situations, girls. Gone wild, a whole massive group of young Great amount of them under 18, drunk, not signing media releases. The one that did sign NDAs were drunk. Owner hit with charges and all that, right? At what point do we start not playing the race card? Because again, if you're talking about, if you're predicting, well, if they release this truth, if they release this truth about what happened at Freak Nick, we all going to look bad. If you're talking about people that generalize black people in general, why should that silence people from telling the truth? Some people are going to say all black men did this. So don't release the doc because it's going to be a reflection on all of us. No, it's a reflection of the people caught in 240p. Hello. Hello. 
Accountability is not an attack. I repeat. And a lot of times you got to repeat this to, 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 to some black men. A lot, accountability is not an attack. But they be catching straight bullets for niggas they do not know. They do not know. And they start playing these whataboutisms. And they start going in instead of really, they start going in instead of calling out the men who have engaged in this behavior or their friends and acquaintances and homeboys and their partners that engage in this type of aggressive manner. And I'm going to pull up some videos a little bit later just to say, but this is a sentiment that I see a great amount, a decent amount of, of uh, a chunk, right? It's decent, right? Right? Because I'm doing anything but to not say all because it's not all. I do see some men um, really speaking out against this notion here, but I can say that most of the vocal point coming from black men online, most of it is not calling out and demonizing the behavior that took place, especially the result of sexual assault and rape minus the G and the gun violence too. Most of them aren't speaking out about those atrocities. They're speaking out about, oh, this is about to make us all look bad. Were you on camera doing that? Because it's, it's giving hit dog a holler for me. Do you engage in that type of behavior? No, but it's, it's, about to, it's about to reflect all of us, though. Oh, so I guess no black person should ever come forward and talk about what they've been through at the hands of another black man. Because if they just so happen to tell their story, it means all y'all did it safe M miss me please miss me someone says respectfully jane were you at freaknik baby i was three years old no the fuck i wasn't does that answer your question does that answer your question respectfully elijah the dishonorable elijah reed does that answer your question baby at 1994 freaknik i was three years old so no, I wasn't there. Since you want to be funny, baby, let's laugh. <laughs> and if I was, I would look damn good for my age. But baby, no, I wasn't there. <laughs> what is really going on? Elijah must have been in Freak Nick. He trying to... <laughs> Uh, baby, because I make it make sense. Make it somebody make it make sense for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly where 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 I was around about um, around about this time. I'm gonna show you. Okay. This is where I was. This is this this is where I was doing the freak neck. Okay. Another image of where I was during the freak neck. This is this is where I was, baby. So no, I wasn't there. All right. Now, now, okay, I was busy trying to manifest some eyebrows because maybe I had none when I was born. That's why they're so important to me. Now, when I finally grew my eyebrows, I said, oh, baby, this is what we doing. This is what we doing. <laughs> I was trying to grow some eyebrows. Baby, don't blame me. My, my focus was somewhere else. All right. Wasn't about seven till I got eyebrows. All right. Okay. So, nonetheless, okay, let's move on. I think that on top of it making, it, it, it's making some, some Black men uncomfortable. It is right? Select Black men uncomfortable because they'll have to face the ugly truth about some of their counterparts who have participated in this behavior, okay? And hopefully this weighs on their consciousness and it prompts them to call out the problematic behavior rather than excuse it, right? Because I've even heard some say literally under the same thread that I had pulled up, 
and they were like, um, I'm worried about the bigger issue, which is how this is going to make men look. And really, it's giving rape apologists. That's what it's giving. It's giving rape apologists. And if the if the media is going to generalize you, they're going to generalize you. Y'all didn't have this problem when it was um, Jonathan Majors or when it was Chris Brown or when it's like your generic textbook DV example. Like y'all don't, Y'all don't have them kind of concerns because you'd be like, well, you know, but when it comes to something that's literally caught in 4K, it's let's take up for these niggas that I don't even know. Or this is going to make us all look bad. How about y'all silence this? But I've got some stats that I want to get into. It's really interesting when they want to focus on white media or what white people who have done the same or similar things and they want to focus on them because a lot of times it's oh well this is um this is coming from people who don't look like us this is coming from people that don't look like us they want to villainize us black people and let me read off to you the list of black people who are involved in this publication right you got Jermaine Dupri involved in telling this story um, who was very prominent and relevant during this time. You got P.F. Frank Williams, I'm sorry, P. Frank Williams, Uncle Luke, Alex Avant, Nikki Biles, Jay Allen, just to name a few of the producers and associates and people who are going to be using the Black lens and the Black perspective to tell stories about Black people for us, by us. Y'all remember FUBU, right? So all of the stories and the things that we tell and experiences of Black people, they're not always Black excellence and we survive. Sometimes it's trauma. And it's really irritating when you catch people who are not in the community, hence my intro, right? When you find people who are not a part of the Black community telling stories about Black trauma, telling it in a way in which they don't really understand the nuances, they don't understand there are a, a heap of Black people involved, directly involved in the telling of this from their own black ass experiences, whether it be between the attendants because they were there or they made music that attributed to the culture that really fed into what Freaknik was and what it was all about. Stop playing. So miss me with the trying to deflect. What about what about white folk? What about white folk? What about who? But are white people making it? But what about the black people who we don't save it, save it, save it? Let's take it back to the 90s with this one right here. Save the drama for your mama. Okay. Save it for your mama who's concerned about seeing on this goddamn being seen on this thing. Okay. Gen X mamas did the thing. Okay. I also think that this documentary is going to shed light on some of how such a large toxic environment can cultivate. Yeah, 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 yeah. There were a lot of attributing factors outside of like flat out sexual deviancy or just deviant behavior in general. I think that the large toxic environment, there were other things that fed into this, okay? And many have been, it may have been 1994, honestly, but I bet you, I bet you, if we put all of the contributing factors and lack of security and risk management factors in a boiling pot all over again, mixed with that enormous crowd, okay? We're talking over 200,000 people. Talking a lot of people, okay? No crowd control. Some of the very same things would more than likely repeat themselves to this day in 2023. When you find large crowds with no crowd control and they were invited for whatever reason, right? Look, think about the Travis Scott thing. No sexual assault there, right? But it was still a very large crowd 
oversized crowd. They were not prepared to deal with how to protect the patrons and the attendees. You are going to find trouble brewing all the way down to the marketing of said spring break festival. This was supposed to be a spring break festival. It's what it was supposed to be, right? But it was advertised as Freaknik. A play on freak and picnic. So I don't think that the marketing helped. I don't think that the marketing helped. And again, you add that number of people, the marketing, it turned into a block party. Now listen, let's let's go back to how it started. Let's go back to how it started. Freaknik started off as a small picnic for students who were stuck on campus during spring break. There were no more than 60 students involved at this at this situation. Right? No more than 60 when it the origin of it. Okay? Back in the 80s. It then became an annual event, and each year it grew. Child, let me get my baby picture off here and get the damn. Okay, there we go. So there were no more than 60 students. It became an annual event. Each year it grew. Children from all over the country began road tripping to Atlanta for the festivities. And really what it was was it was... It was something to do for the students who couldn't afford to go home when they lived on campus during spring break. That's what it was, right? Just, just to give them something to do, a little campus pride, a little something, 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 okay? And so um, it went from a picnic to a festival. Assaults of all sorts. You had people getting shot. People who weren't even in college. 56-year-old men showing up. You know, they're attending to do what they wanted to do in a virtually lawless land. Let me tell you how bad Freaknik got. Just logistically. Just logistically. Right? You've got people from different colleges from California, Washington, Minnesota, Texas, wherever. Road tripping for days at a time just to get to Freaknik in Atlanta. And the roads got so backed up. The freeways, the beltways were so backed up and for hours on end, by the time you just sat in traffic for two or three hours and your car ain't moved an inch, you get out of your car and you start walking up and down the freeway just to talk to girls, just to talk. Hey, it's Freaknik, right? This is how bad it was. And it was a virtually lawless land because... There were virtually any, co compared to the thousands of people, the tens of thousands of people that attended, if there weren't the handful of college campus security or whatever already there, police couldn't get through. Ambulances couldn't get through. Fire trucks couldn't get through. You had one of the highest peaks in people not being able to attend funerals, receive medical attention. Firefighters couldn't get to their destinations because Freaknik cards, call it caused such a big thing back in the early 90s, right? And so long story short, this was a virtually lawless land. You can call in the heart of Freaknik that something was going on or a 56 year old was doing something he had no business in the middle of Freaknik, but police couldn't get there because this is just, that's just how it was. It was jam packed. A 56 year old man has no business has no business at a college festival. But again, where was the crowd control to make sure that this was a college exclusive event? You need to have a college ID to get in. Don't have it, you ain't getting in here. Not that that would have completely eliminated the bulk of the traumatic issues there, but it would have definitely alleviated some things. It was a virtually lawless land at that time. And to make it even worse, Freak Nick, it was it was causing it was it was causing a big disturbance. It was causing a disturbance to the city, right? So you had people, businesses, again, you got these huge freeway backups and all of you know the loud music, the destruction, customers can't get in and out. It it caused a huge hindrance for the neighborhoods and the businesses and the livelihoods of people who simply weren't in college and weren't interested in freaking. 
And so when they sent these complaints up to the mayor and the councilman at that time, they turned a blind eye. They turned a blind eye to it. Why? Because Freak Nick had been copywritten at some point, right? At once it ended with a C. They trademarked it to end with a K. They had vendors and businesses and all the artists and things that they were booking. Freak Nick brought in literally, go look it up, $20 million into the city per year. I mean, you got the tourists and, and the taxes and everything else that's going on. Freak Nick brought in $20 million to Atlanta, Georgia every year. Well, I mean, it grew, right? They were trying to do things to create some crowd control, but it just wasn't working, right? Them councilmen wasn't trying to calm anything down. They wanted that money. And they even allotted $1 million to having police officers on debt. Um, $1 million to having police officers on deck that budget. And they wanted to use that budget um, in conjunction with helping with the cleanup of Freak Nick. But that $1 million wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. It caused a huge disturbances, again, to the residents who weren't interested in Freak Nick, the businesses, and the livelihood of everybody else who just weren't engaging. So they turned a blind eye to the slew of complaints and the disorderly conduct that took place there. So I just wanted to give you some backstory on the history of Freak Nick. What it did to the surrounding community because of the lack of control. I do think had it been under, had it been kept, kept, kept content in the beginning, had it been, um, maybe marketed a, a, just a little bit differently. Just just a little bit, just a little bit. You know, you think about the connotation. Could anybody in college really look at their parents? Where are you going? I'm going to Freak Nick. Like, could you even tell your parents that? Like, I feel like the marketing of it contributed to um, some of the unfortunate things. Not is, is it to blame? I wouldn't say it's to blame, but I do think that people's, where people's mind went, as soon as they heard the name, of this event, of this gathering, I feel like it contributed to some of the sinister thoughts that immediately enter people's minds when they consider attending. So I think that the marketing could have been a bit different. Um, so that's that, okay? And so, um, yeah, you know, I'm gonna break it down. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down and thank you so much. It, it, it brought a lot of money in and brought a lot of money in and thank you all so much. Listen, if y'all enjoying it so much, we got less than 300 likes, 542 people here. Listen, hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, this is all I want to know. Why? Just hit the button for me, baby. Baby, just hit the button. Okay. Now. Like I said, some black men talk about what the palm colored people do that is predatory as well, right? Palm colored people, right? The non-black people, the whites. <laughs> In other words, what's the white equivalent? Because this is about to paint all black men as predators. That is deflection, as I stated, because it's already been done. It's literally on camera, okay? Where does this apply? Where does this apply to all black men when we're specifically talking about the ones on tape? Like, I just, I don't understand how. I don't understand how. Why y'all talking about all black men being predators? Let's talk about the white predator. <laughs> this is a sick Negro. Why do we got to switch to, you know, the same way we like to say, you know what, the white people are obsessed with us. It's given obsession when you try to deflect in such a way that we can't have conversations about men who just so happen to be black, who are certified predators. We see it in 240p, 240 pixels. 
it's given, let's obsess and play this race card with the other side. And what's that helping? What is that adding to the dialogue here? Again, it's deflection because it's already been done. April 23rd last year, TMT, TNT put out a, uh, a documentary called, I think it was Girls Gone Wild Exposed. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. But, because I got his mugshot and everything. Because, baby, yes, they 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 got his ass. They got him. Okay? But it's deflection. It's been done before. It's on camera. White people are also bad as a deflection talking point. It does nothing to help victims of the past, present, or in our community. This sort of lack of accountability, honestly, I can tell y'all it's gross. And this kind of whataboutism is kind of problematic. And I'm using kind of lightly. It's very problematic. It's problematic. You'd be a fool to think that it's not problematic. The, the whataboutism to deflect, that, that's just like when I talk about R. Kelly, right? And they be like, you going to talk about Harvey Weinstein and this other white, white people that I do not know. You going to talk about this person and that person and da-da-da. And listen, when I covered the Robert trial, I definitely, I, now what I did have knowledge on was, what's it called? Nexium, which was um, a, a, a cult. Okay, you know, if I know about them and I'll speak about them, I'll say, okay, black people ain't the only ones that do X, Y, Z. Let's go ahead and talk about you know, this too, or just like, and it was very relevant actually in Robert's case because um, because of the way that it was upheld in court and, and racketeering and all this other stuff, right? But sometimes it's really just, it's, it, it's not pertinent, it's not relevant, it's not. And it's a, it's a mechanism in order to get out of keeping it real about things that have happened within our own community. And if you think that you're above reproach, and our community is is shouldn't be held accountable by our own, right? We're talking about conversations that are literally for us and about us. Then something is really wrong. Something's wrong. If you think that black people aren't allowed to help to hold other black people accountable, something's really going on. Something's really going on. Okay. So Let's go ahead and continue. I'm going to pull up this man's picture in just uh, I'm going to pull up this man's picture in a second. Because I want you to see his mugshot. Oh, yes. He was held accountable. He certainly was. I mean, to an extent. To an extent, to be honest with you. um, It, it wasn't as much as he should have been, in my opinion. But The what about isms have to stop. The festival, really, what a lot of people don't realize, the festival isn't the main point or the race of people also isn't the main point, right? It's about how predatory and traumatizing all of these big sponsored parties were back in the day because misogyny and specifically misogyny and war were so bad at that time. That's the conversation that a lot of people aren't really trying to have, but let's talk about it. Now, this is the man who was exposed, who ran, who created the whole Girls Gone Wild franchise festival, whatever you want to call it. Again, this is from the documentary that revisits the toxic legacy of Girls Gone Wild. It's been done. It's been done. So when you say, what about exposing Girls Gone Wild? It's been done. Done. Let's not let's not get 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 into how he skirt, skirt, straight past the Me Too movement because Girls Gone Wild had just fell completely into oblivion. I know a lot of us remember. Put a nine in the chat if you remember waking up in the middle of the night and seeing Girls Gone Wild stuff on your TV when you was in grade school. A lot of it was blurred out. Now here's what I will say about the Girls Gone Wild documentary. Put a nine in the chat. If you remember them commercials, late at night, 
I mean, they, they advertise that so commercially. And as an adult, as a child, you don't know. But as an adult, I'm like, how are they literally like buying airtime to have these young drunk? And I know some of them had to be at least 16 years old because it's difficult to differentiate between, uh, you know, 14 to 19, 20 year old because it just they can just all blend in or whatnot. How how were they commercially advertising this, baby? He met his plethora of lawsuits. Do you hear me? Now, think about it the other way around. Girls going wild, gets exposed, and the whites sit around saying, what's the black equivalent to this? Because I'm not about to have the media paint all whites as, as predators. What's the black equivalent? No, 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 no. Sit in your mess. You're a predator. You did it. You did it. You do you hear how asinine that sounds? Do you do y'all hear how asinine that sounds? Yes, in MTV Spring Break. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Shout out to me and Mia for the two ninety nine uh, super sticker. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And shout out to Quinundrum ninety three for the ten dollars. Um, I personally believe that Freaknik contributed to the popularity of, popularity of Magic City. I know a guy who started the pawn company and did his recruiting in 1998 at Freaknik. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Really good point. Really good point. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so I see a lot of now. I see the... A lot of y'all know it was either that or BT Uncut. Something. Something. Shout out to Queen Vonna for the $4.99 super chat as well. Um, Queen Vonna says, Black people need to stop acting like we don't have R's and P's in our communities. Exactly. Grapists, people who engage in predatory behavior. Black people who get hurt are unheard and invisible because of that mentality. Speak on it. Speak on it. It's part of that. What happens in this house stays in this house. And... We not even talking about the house, right? Like we talking about outside in 240p and y'all feel like, whoa, we're a community. We should just be like hiding each other's faults. And it depends on what the fault is, God damn it. Some, some conversations do need to be had, quote unquote, in-house as a part of the black community, right? But not to the point where we're excusing R's and P's because let's not forget that a lot of that actually did go on in the black household, did it not? Your uncle touched you, somebody touched you, and your family told you, don't tell nobody, and still invite said R or P family member to Thanksgiving dinner, and you're left to pretend like that didn't happen, and you're left to deal with this hurt because your family is afraid to address the elephant in the room, elephant being that piece o s family member who couldn't keep them hands to themselves. How about it? Speak on it. It's not a mentality that, ad ad that advances us in any way, in any way, okay? Let's speak on it. So, um, another thing that I want to show. God damn it, I thought I said both. I thought I said both. Okay. So, another thing I want to show you, just, just for some of y'all. And I, I listen, I implore you all to watch it, take a look at it, right? And see one difference between these two publications um, at least from what we can see in the trailer that Hulu released, is Girls Gone Wild, they did blur the faces of the participants out. I guess they, I, I feel like they, hindsight being 2020, they understood that, um, they understood they didn't sign media releases. If they did, it's questionable. They intentionally got them drunk, got them all this extra alcohol, whatever the case is. Now, will they do that type of due diligence for this Hulu documentary? I do believe it's something that should be questioned. A lot of people who participated and didn't sign, whether it was consensual stuff, non-consensual stuff, this documentary that is slated to be released by Hulu does look like it's going to broadcast the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? The fun of it, it was it was litty. It was a situation to some where they had a good time and they turned up and it was it was what it was. But there was a horrific side to it, too. And I don't think that any of them signed off on press releases. 
right? So will they blur the faces out? It's interesting. Hopefully with the lawsuits being filed by the different women um, and, and the general fear that some of the women who know for sure they participated in 1994 in Freaknik, hopefully, hopefully they do blur out some faces. Hopefully they do. But that trailer is not looking... It's not looking too promising, you know. Shout out to Devontae Cunningham for being in the chat. Shout out to you. Okay. Thank you for being here and for being a member and a subscriber. Okay. So that's that. Okay. Now, if you are curious as to who this man was that was held accountable and dragged through the mud, rightfully so, for cultivating something as horrendous as Girls Gone Wild. His name is Joe Francis. He was a man that was gone wild, among many others, though, right? Because some of his staff, they were all about it at first, and then something clicked, and they started kind of like walking out, not filming, just quitting on the spot because they realized, oh, shit, he's birthed the monster. I'm filming a 17-year-old girl have relations, illicit relations with a 19-year-old, whatever. And they were like quitting on the spot because they realized I'm in a pickle here. I'm in a pickle here, right? So there were many other people who I went wild too. This man actually racked up $20 million in just two years from Girls Gone Wild. He was a pretty aggressive guy as well. He felt entitled, right? Girls Gone Wild has been exposed and uncovered many a times, many a times. Dude is a grapist sleaze bag okay who built an empire off of the exploitation of drunk young women got his mugshot here uh, charges such as battery false imprisonment intimidation of a witness prostitution child pornography the list goes on and on but again he slipped under the radar of the me too movement and he fled the country to his resort home in Mexico when the lawsuits started coming in. So when people act like, oh, well, what's the white equivalent? How come they aren't being called out as well? They've been called out, right? This generation doesn't really understand what a girl's gone wild is. We do. Millennials and everybody that came afterwards do. And you might talk to a, let's just say a 19 or 24 year old. They really might not like, what, what you mean girls gone wild? You mean like. They, they, they won't get it. We understand the name of that franchise. It was a secret household name because if you was up late night watching um, the Parkers or the Steve Harvey show and whatever, and it went off at 10, 11, 12 o'clock and you was up a little later than you were supposed to be, your mama told you to turn that TV off at 11, but you were still up at midnight and then here come 12.05 or 1 o'clock and you still ain't with the sleep yet. And all of a sudden you see some daggone girls going wild. Like, what the hell? We know what it is. BET Uncut was just music videos with people who you would think consented on the set, right? But, you know, it was around about the same time slot. If you were up late at night to catch BET Uncut, you were up late at night to catch some girls going wild and commercials where they asking you for money to get some girl-on-girl -girl action type of stuff. Like, that's just what it was. Um, Conundrums at another $5. Super chat, thank you for that. The guy that did the recruiting at freak nickname was D Sparky. Google him. Oh, let me screenshot that real quick. Thank you for coming through with that. With that, Sarah. Thank you so much. Mm, that's interesting. He's cool with the Kardashians. Oh, he's still a thing here. And mm, mm, I don't. That's what they. I don't know. Some people in the chat say it is him. Some people say it wasn't. I, I'm unsure, and I will do a little bit of research when I get off of here with that. All I know is this man was dr uh, rightfully dragged through the mud. Dragged through the mud. And, and here's the thing. The bottom line is predators come in all colors. Predators come in all colors. Okay? So when there is a predator being called to the carpet, and, I, and I'm talking, we talking... Let's let's get down to the real nitty gritty. And I'm getting ready to drop the link in the chat for those of y'all who want to call in. Put a two in the chat if you still want to call in. So I know that y'all are still out there. If I don't get any twos in the chat, then I just won't drop the link. Okay. Predators come in all colors. Do you hear me? And so when we act like we can't talk about certain predators based off of their colors, like what is what is what what's it given? 
what hope does that leave for anybody that comes after us? Hey, Mrs. Parker. <laughs> but no, predators come in all colors. Stop acting like we're not allowed to talk about predators based off of a color. It's, it's, it's weird energy. It's weird energy to me. It's weird. And then we get to talking about the real nitty gritty of it, which is y'all hate when people come out with their allegations and their story of something that wasn't caught on camera, that they can't prove, quote unquote. There's no evidence. Oh, all of this is circumstantial. We don't know. It's just their side of the story. But we're talking about people who were caught in almost 8K. They were caught in 240p on camera. And you're gonna you're you're taking up for them. They're caught on camera, all of the videos, some of which I'm afraid to put here on the screen because it's gruesome. The way they're going up and trying to rip the clothes off a woman, ripping women out of their cars. The women are trying to fend them off, but it's, it's just this mob of women. And you have an issue with them being held accountable and us talking about them and call them, calling them the predators that they are. You're taking up for them and, you, and your takeaway from him being a predator, predator in that video, your takeaway is, oh, this is about to make us all look bad. Let's talk about the white predators instead. Are you mad? Are you not embarrassed? You should very much be embarrassed. Yes, and men stood by and watched. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And 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 they even continued chanting, which I feel like if you when you, when you catch these crowds of more than a couple hundred people, once a crowd gets out of control, it's over. It's over. When when a crowd starts raging and wanting to do whatever they want to do, it's it's dangerous, which is why crowd control is a thing it's a thing okay it very much is okay so let me see this mm, i do think that this freaknik conversation has really exposed how our community will defend men that they've never met just because black women are saying that they were assaulted and it was captured on camera. Even when there's literal video evidence of it taking place. Saddening, maddening, all of, all, all of the above, all of the above, okay? So while some black men may be nervous, I'm sorry, while some black women may be nervous for being outed, for being carefree, some black men ought to be a bit more nervous for possibly being outed for far more dangerous and criminal things. But to be clear, this is not an attack on black men. Let's let's keep it a buck. This is not an attack on black men, as some of them online have purported it to be. To show the ugly truths about a portion of people in our own community shouldn't be perceived as a part of some quote unquote hidden agenda to what? Tear the black man down? Woo, not accountability tearing the black man down. It should be perceived as a call to action for accountability and serious conversation about consent and sexual violence. It also shouldn't be taken as an opportunity to engage in whataboutism with regard to white people and the things they've seemingly gotten away with. Again, we spoke about Girls Gone Wild Exposed, literally came out this time last year. And all in all, all in all, what should be noted is that we really have no clue what this new Hulu documentary would show, but we can hope, we can hope that it shows the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth of a once beloved festival that brings back memories to so many for so many 
different reasons. Our community, our people are owed that much. Shout out to the root. That's all I'll say about that. Shout out to the root. Now, now, let's go ahead and open the phone lines. Where are you at, Freak Nick? Do you knew somebody? Do you know somebody who was at Freak Nick? Was one of your parents that they slipped it in like, oh, I might have been there, prepared to defend me online. Well, well, no for me, baby. Are you concerned or are you cackling on the inside because your parents might be outed as something that they said they never were? Everybody has them in a goody two shoes all of their life. Okay. If that's the case, if you're interested in sounding off on this subject matter, please do me a favor and call in. I'm about to drop the link. Okay. We're at 386. I'll drop the link when we get to 400, which should really only take two minutes, right? There are a few of y'all here who have not hit the thumbs up button, and that's okay. Hit the button. We'll drop the link. Drop some pancakes in the chat. Shout out to the special members. Shout out to the Discord, okay? Share this video via text message on Twitter, in your group chats, on Facebook, however it is that you share videos. Make sure you share this thing. And let's hear what other people got to say about it. I've been talking about it for a little less than an hour and a half. And it's time that I hear from y'all, okay? Okay. So we're going to go ahead. Okay, we're three away. It looks like we're about to drop it, okay? And if the last two of y'all don't. What you waiting for? Because I go get Tokyo on you right now. If she going to cuss her own daughter out, baby, she definitely going to cuss y'all out. Okay. Don't make me go. Don't make me go get Tokyo. Dark sided. Dark sided. All right. Let me go ahead and get the link. The link for those of y'all who may not be sure of how to work this thing. We might have some hell. Attendees up in the chat. If you're an, an attendee, the link is AKA the phone number. To call in. So when I drop the link, just think of it like a phone number and you click it, but it's based on your internet and not your, you know, to make sure you got good internet. You won't call in. Okay. Where is Leo? You know what? That's a really good question. Where is Leo? He's somewhere around here. He might be outside with his daddy or uh, he's somewhere around here. He woke me up this morning. Um, okay. I dropped the link in the chat. Okay, let's hear the people sound off. We need people to call in and say how they feel about Freak Nick. Okay, what are your thoughts about it? Are people are people getting too worked up about it? Are people looking too much into it? Have you been? Do you think it's a big deal? It's not a big deal. What do you agree? What do you disagree with? Any and all thoughts? Baby, call me now. Call me now. Bring them on up. Yes, 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 yes. Call me now. Call on in. You know, I wonder if Miss Cleo, the psychic scammer, I wonder if she had a documentary too exposing her ass. I did watch that. I wonder if she was at Freak Nick. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to be zooming in on the footage when they, uh, when they release this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So... We have got a caller back here. Caller almost scared me. I saw your face. You look like somebody I knew. Baby, when I was about to say, how the hell did you find me? I thought you was somebody I knew. Um, okay, let's go ahead and get into our first caller. Y'all give us a thumbs up in the chat. Drop some pancakes and let's get into it. The following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. All right, we've got our first caller. Thank you so much for calling in. What are your thoughts? Good afternoon to you, young lady. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Um, I got chin checked by my daughter. My daughter, who's now uh, 23 um call me and said dad I, I i know you are out there uh i just want to know if there's anything i need to be embarrassed about i said no uh-uh 
um, and she was she was um, prompted to call me by her mother. They just wanted to know, want to know if I was if I was out there doing anything I shouldn't I didn't have any business doing. That ninety four year was a year right after my undergrad, right after I completed my undergrad. But I went out there, I had a blast. Um, but the thing that stands out to me more than anything was the guy D Sparky that I mentioned uh, in the chat. Um, now. I didn't agree with a lot of stuff that was going on out there. Matter of fact, some of the stuff really pissed me off, to be quite honest with you. Um, mainly because I had sisters, I had a mother, um, and I just felt that, you know, uh, it was just out of line, out of pocket. Mm -hmm. So, but the, the guy, D Sparky, happened to have recruited a classmate of mine, and she actually did porn. She's a teacher now. Go figure. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, she, 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 she teaches elementary school. Um, but, uh, he got her to, to do it. If, if you ever get a chance, Google that guy's name is company's actually from New Orleans, but he will go out, he, he will go out to, uh, to events like that and recruit. Mm. Interesting. So you said you had a blast. Do you mean yes. you let off or let out a blast or did you just have one? The people want to know. No, I just had one. I, 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 I had, I had fun. I really had fun. You know, I had, I spent, um, five grueling years trying to finish my undergrad, and um, that was my that was my relief. Okay. Well, that's nice. That's nice. So now, what was I was I taking advantage of some women? No. Uh, was I standing around and and allowing? Well, the parties that I went to now at Freaknik, everyone had their own individual parties as well. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but um, but I specifically remember going to uh, um. To, to, uh, to the house of someone who I went to high school with, and he had a party there at his house. But um, but there was a lot going on downtown, man. It was just unbelievable. You, the, so speak really briefly, because we got one, two, three, four. We got four. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, 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 I'm going to go ahead and get out. I just, I just, oh, no, just no, want to chime no, in. Real quick, you said you said you seen stuff that you didn't agree with. Can you kind of elaborate, like just summarize, like what, what, what was it that you saw you didn't agree with? Well, I, I I did see a, a girl giving a guy a head. Uh, I don't know if I can say that on your platform. Um, in the middle of a parking lot, while everybody looked on, um, and that wasn't that was the era of the little palm hand uh, uh, camcorder. And my thoughts were, damn, I wonder if this person think that this is never going to get out. Because mm. uh, I mean. <laughs> um, Apparently it is. So, uh, but I, I I can I can understand um, the uh, the concerns of those people that are trying to stop um, this from getting out. But I hope that the young that the young women of this generation understands that the internet is forever, and the young men as well. Yeah. When you, when you, um, when you do dumb shit, you're gonna win dumb prizes. Exactly. Whether it was on VHS or smartphone. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, but hey, I'm enjoying the show. I'm glad I was able to contribute. Um, but I, I just wanted to give my, my, uh, my two cents uh, what's left of it. No problem. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you for calling in and hitting thumbs up on the video. No problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. No problem. All right. Y'all heard that? He was out there having a blast, but not having a blast baby the people wanted to know what kind of blast was you having and did someone's face suffer a little something it's like it's sunday and we on we on the church bus we on the church bus we on the church bus listen listen i just had no he said he had a blast what kind of blast you let off a blast okay 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 next call he said he ain't do nothing so his kids ain't got nothing to worry about but i'm gonna still look because i seen his face back here mm -hmm. i'm be zooming in i'm be ta i'm be i'm be taking a look what at what's going on okay all right we got our next caller thank you so much for calling in what do you have to say about the freak nick hey can you hear me yes okay thank you so yes yeah, so in 94 i was 17 and just to let you know there were high school kids that were going to freak nick oh my so, god no <laughs> yeah it was high school i was 17 and i and i graduated in 95 so i'm telling my age there were kids at my high school, and I'm in Ohio, that drove down to go to Freak Thick. And when 94 happened, we were going to think about going in 95, but there was a guy who came back with the video 
and we had seen what was on the video and we were like, yeah, that's when we decided we weren't going to go because you, yeah, the stuff we seen on that video, the guy and the guy told us, he was like, this was only a sample. Like this was a small snippet of what he had seen. And it just being females, it just shocked us. And, but yeah, so people like you were saying something about the 56, there were teenagers high school students that were there too. And I knew of some females that went down there and they, there was stuff that happened. Yeah. So, so yeah, the so video we, that's going to come on out, I don't think it's just only your aunties. It's going to be aunties, moms, grandmothers, but it's going to be also underage too, because oh, they were in my school and they went. So and, and see, and, and that's why I feel like it's so dangerous to blur some, but not all faces. If you're going on like a not blurring thing for the sake mm -hmm. of like production for Hulu, you don't know what's a minor doing something or not, which is kind of where Girls Gone Wild got into trouble. Because it's not like for Girls Gone Wild, they weren't checking for IDs every time. It was just a, hey, this is a college badge. And if you didn't look like you were under 11, they let you in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you're publishing stuff of people doing crude or illicit things or lewd or illicit things, then you you could find yourself in a, a, a kitty kitty corn situation which mm -hmm. is not cool not cool mm -hmm. that's uh whoo mm -mm. yeah so i seen it and i and i can still vividly like one thing i can see i can literally vividly see this female's face on what things that was being done and i'll never forget that but also you are right in that this does need to be i don't think this is going to demonize black men as predators because like you saying I just saw a documentary with these other festivals like Coachella festivals, where you have after these festivals, white females are coming forth and putting in reports of being great and saying, and they're telling them don't crowd surf because when they were crowd surfing, they were getting felt up, groped, right. digitally pulled. So it's not just us saying, oh, they're gonna demonize. No, it's the male behavior and that you're a female. And just because you have one, a top or something short does not mean that you're there for something sexual, but you have males that go to these events that are over sexualizing and like, oh, I'm going to go here. I'm going to get laid. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So those people, those men need to be pointed out. They need to have the light shined on them. Right. And the behavior, you know, cause even though it was 1994, this stuff is still happening. Like, hello, mm -hmm. this stuff is yeah. that type of behavior and some of the preventative measures and things. No one should be blamed for what they were wearing, right? Because, I mean, a grapist is going to be a grapist is going to be a grapist. So I don't mm -hmm. think that it's fair to say you were great because of your outfit. There have been some people who have been fully clothed, who have been people who weren't asking for it, who have been. But again, I'm talking about the accountability of the marketing, the way it was put together, the lack of crowd control. I feel mm -hmm. like some of those things, if you're trying to attend a festival or something where it doesn't seem like they have anything in place, it, it can get dangerous. And it doesn't even always have to be S.A., right? It could mm -hmm. look at the Travis Scott thing. It could just it could be flat out death because people getting trampled, their stampedes, all types of stuff like large crowds can be very dangerous, no matter what color. It is definitely, so, definitely, yeah, yeah. I so understand. thank you for for bringing this up as a topic because yes, it does need to, it, it does need to be talked about. And I think I don't think the documentary is just going to focus on that aspect. I'm I'm thinking it's going to be like you said, it's going to. It was a nice festival, it was, but then it just deteriorated to what it had became. But it was great at the beginning because it was it was talked about when I was like 13 and 14. I started hearing about it and it was it was just supposed to be a big party until then when I got 17 and then seeing the videos it's like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, something, you know, they get out of control. You people want I want as many people to come out as possible. But can you handle that? Are you mm -hmm. going to do what needs mm -hmm. to, be to protect your attendees? It's, it's, it's a big question. And that's something as women we need to be concerned about with any concert, any gathering, like who's around, what's around, is my man's with me, is my cousin coming with me, it's important, but thank you so much for calling in. Thank you, you have a good one. No problem, you too. Okay.
It is getting sticky out here. The people from Freaknik are calling. Well, well, yeah, actually, people did attend Freaknik. First two callers were actually there. Okay, people who went to Freaknik calling in. Okay, we listen. This is how you know my demographic goes far. The people who watch my channel are between sixteen and fifty three ish, fifty seven ish. Anybody above there, I just feel like I'll keep that to myself. Let's go ahead and get into the next caller. And thank you for commenting along. I'm um, keeping up with y'all comments in the chat. Let's get into our next caller and drop some pancakes in the chat. The following video is broadcasting live. And thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. All right. Shady Gem Dropper, you are not a first time caller, but thank you so much for calling in. What are your thoughts about Zefriknika? My thoughts are, man, I was so upset because I graduated high school in 95. And I was like, man, I miss Freak Nick. Man, I miss it. Now I'm glad. Whoo, child. You glad you missed that it? That was a blessing. Yes, because I didn't even, this is, I, I, I was a little small town country girl here in Texas. So I didn't know nothing about uh, the essay that happened and none of that kind of stuff. Until now, hearing about it because I, I mean, like I said, I missed out on going to it. Now, I did go to the, but took, you know, kind of tried to take the, its place, the Kappa Beach party here in Texas that was at, in Galveston. Uh, you heard about it? No. Oh, yes, baby. The Kappa Beach party, you go from about 9 5 to probably what, 2000, I think. That was like the new freak nick type thing. Then that was like like you said, when you sitting there on in the free on the freeway and you're not moving because there's so many people and traffic and instead of it taking you two hours to get somewhere, it took you about ten and you'll be sitting there and they they got to where they closed the gas stations down in in, in Galveston. They didn't want you to buy gas. They definitely didn't want nobody to use their restroom. They got to be where they wasn't putting porta potties out. It was just horrible. Oh, well, that sounds like a little fire festival, uh, you know, situation. That sounds hard. Yeah, basically, yeah. And the rooms were just too expensive, and, and then they didn't even want to let people even come. And they ended up, you know, closing down because it got to be too much of a hazard. Because, it, like you said, those small areas and the pack all those people in and then you have you know at that point you're on the beach in Galveston so then you got people in the water trying to swim and they've been drinking it's just it was a it was a big hazard so maybe they had told us no they told no 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 the campus had the the Kappa beach party anybody in the chat remember the Kappa beach party let me see people in the chat let me see. I'm sure they'll comment in a second. I'm sure if mine behind. But oh, this is um, this is horrible. Oh, somebody did say I do dope and get okay, this. Okay, yeah, dope. yeah, I see that. This is I, I just it's 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 a lot going on. This is that was I mean I was a baby at that time. I mean I've had times where I wore mini skirts and stuff back when I was skinny as a pencil, but like I just. First of all, being out there in the heat, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm just a different, a different type. Um, yeah, I, I just imagine being in something called the Freak Nick. I would feel like my family would have shamed me to the high heavens if I, <laughs> if they knew you want to Freak Nick. You know, when you're younger, the way that your your family can um, make you feel ashamed or manipulated is a bit easier. But that's why in, in some aspects, the pressure that the older generation can put on you, in some aspects, it can be good. Because had it not been for shame or things like that, I might have would have just went like, you know what, forget y'all. There were a lot of things I said forget y'all about, but not when it would come to attending something that was literally called Freak Nick. I'm glad for that type of shame because it did keep me from making some really, you know, crazy decisions. It's, it's a double-edged sword, right? Sometimes they used it in a way that's like, come on now. Other times, it's like, I'm grateful for it. Like the other call that it called, you know, like, I'm grateful that, well, like you, should I say, I'm grateful that I didn't go because, you know, look what would have happened. So, listen, I'm I'm, I'm grateful that, I, you know, because I've heard there have been ones all the way up to 2022. There was a freak Nick last year. You know, mind you, it probably was nowhere near the same. 
Yeah. As the, the older ones, which is what I've seen via the other document, because this is the first time, but first of all, Freaknik documentary has been put out. There have been several Freaknik documentaries put out. It's just that, you know, Hulu is is, is uh, a bit of a big name and a lot of people are really feeling it and responding to it. So, you know. The new one about um, uh, Kappa Beach Party down at um, Galveston, it'll, it'll be about the same thing. And plus, there's probably going to be way more footage because people had, lots of people had camcorders by then and, and stuff. And so it was, and people had their little DVD camcorders and stuff by then. So maybe it might be some more stuff coming on the horizon. We get to thinking about that too. Because I actually was driver and I had friends and I you know, they got in the back of the truck and was twerking and all of that, but they didn't, you know, get undressed and get in their swimsuits and nothing like that. Because honey, I was ready to go back to Huntsville to Sam Houston and get back on campus because baby, it was too many people. I was my anxiety kicked in. I I, mean, I can't see for miles that if uh, uh, somebody started doing anything, anything going on, I know I wouldn't be able to move. Just, I mean, anything. It's just it was too many, too many people, too many. Okay, let so, me pull Thank this. you for having me, huh? No problem. I'm going to pull this up. If you want to drop down, that's okay. But I'm going to pull this up. I'm just, just so people understand. Like I said, a lot of people have fun. A lot of, from what we've seen, people had fun. But there was a, there was, there was a side of it that was not so fun. And I'm about to show that to you all right here. Okay. Let's take a look. Nothing on top of cars. You know, you can really contain it. You know what I mean? And so once it got to that point where um, where it, is, it was infringing on everybody regardless, I mean, that in a lot of ways that made it bigger. You know, that made it more popular. You know, kids were like, man, you gotta, you gotta make free men. You know, it just became one of those must attend events. It got too big. It, it got dangerous. I mean, it went from what it started was with colleges. And it, it and when it got to the hood, it became more and more dangerous. More rape cases, more murders, more robberies, more stuff like that. It just became dangerous. It just, it, it, it was like a bubble that was just waiting to burst, and it burst. And when it was starting to fall, and it started actually raping the girl, who was getting on top of the car, getting naked and stuff, and snatch them off the car, and actually started raping them. So that really stopped it. Mm. it just too much, too much time started happening. I mean, I enjoyed it from the perspective of college kids coming from different parts of the country, all coming here promoting. Know, networking and whatnot, but I think to a certain degree, it really had gotten out of order uh, when it came to the way that you know these guys would just you just can run up to an innocent and not even do things that they can do to them. You know, you know my, I don't have a cake, top hat, and cake. I should have gave y'all a trigger warning before this. This is this is. You know, it's a bit. I was watching this earlier this morning, and I was, as I was preparing for this video, and I'm like, to hear this woman yelling, "Stop!" They're ripping her out the car. They're trying to rip her clothes off. It's just her and her homegirls there surrounded by a mob of men. And it wouldn't matter what color those men were. They were going to overpower her because they wanted something that they didn't have consent to get. It's just sad. And it's really pathetic. Very much. But a big old bank of money. But, you know, you know, you know, right is right and wrong is wrong. You know, you got to have a little more respect for the ladies. And what if you run up on somebody's woman just because she dressed hot? You know what I'm saying? And this is a married man woman, you grabbing the ass and grabbing the titties and grabbing the weave and pulling off the wig, you know, could cause some problems. And it just said really got to go You got all these people from all these other states, all these girls from other states, they come to Atlanta, they turning up on a whole nother level because they in Atlanta. And we couldn't, I think a lot of the guys that was seeing what was going on was getting caught up. Yeah, so that's just, that's just one of the... Um, one of the many horrific videos, and I won't bother triggering y'all with so many of the other ones, but there were lots of them um, where the women were literally trying to fight them. And I mean, even interviews that were done back in the day, like I said, I tracked down a woman who participated in a news interview in an old one that I'll show up and pull you on in a second. And she's also participating in this one based off of what she experienced and endured and, and, and witnessed. 
Um, so it, it wasn't all fun and games for everybody. Some of y'all aunties and uncles might have turned up and did a lot of consensual stuff. Other people were unfortunately victims of uh, other people's, you know, devilish desires, you know. So um, I wanted to show that up. Thank you so much, Shay, for coming up and, and speaking your thoughts about the freak neck. Yes, and thank you so, again, so much for having me. And I'm going to see you later. All righty. See you later in the Discord. Mm -hmm. All righty. All um, righty. I want to share about thank you so much, Sherry, for All right. Let's get you. I just muted your mic, right? Make sure you meet me in the back. I've got you up here, Rosalind Burst. I believe I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um. Okay, they clicked out. I, I, they're having technical difficulties. Um. Wait a minute. What happened now? Okay. Rosalind, are you here? Can you hear me? Sounds like they might be having technical difficulties. Rosalind, I'll bring you up next when we've got all the technical difficulties worked through, okay? If you can still hear. All right. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next caller, Bronze. Hey, how are you? Thank you for calling in. We talk about free Ooh, ooh, wait a minute. Let me just mute you for one second. Just make sure you mute me in the back, okay, so that we don't have to, uh, like, hear the echo. So I'm going to unmute you real quick. All right. Or they muted themselves. I think they're still trying to get situation situated as well, okay? All right. Make sure if you're listening along to the show... Um, well, it's difficult to say call in and have me mute it because you still want to hear. But keep in mind some of these technical difficulties and what might be stopping you from getting on. So I can't unmute their mic. I think they're also having technical difficulties. So I've got the both of you still back here for when you're ready. Um, unmute your mic when you're ready, and I'm going to move on to the next person. Yes, I can hear you. Are you still echoing? Because I Let's turned it down. In Let's see. I'm sorry. I'm new at this. <laughs> it's okay. I can hear myself. Okay, hold on. Okay. 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 Let's okay. Oh. Let's mm, let's okay. Drop me down. I'll try again. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's move on to our next caller. Dope and gifted life. Thank you for calling in. And what are your thoughts on the freak deck? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome, awesome. Okay, because I got you on my phone here. All right. So I'm so glad you had a show today um, about this. I'm originally from Georgia. I'm a Georgia peach. Oh. Um, um, when I say this this whole Nick um, debacle, they're opening up Pandora's box and they need to sit it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm. I really, see, I, I don't care. My, my age is, is vintage. I'm, I'll be 41 this year. So when Freaknet started, it was easily known to me in high school that that was the next level to go of parties. So it didn't really start for college for me because, ugh, because at the end of the day, um, it starts off with just the whole point of you going to a party and you're engaging with college people because you're going to college. That, that little segue, now I personally didn't go. Let me guess that. I didn't go, but that is how it was always played. So when she talked about um, Kappa Di or, yeah, the Kappa Week, Kappa mm -hmm. Week, um, Black Beach Week was a website. You know what I'm saying? You go on there, you find out everything, the next party, the next beach party from Daytona, the whole strip down, Black Bike, uh, Bike Week, everything. What ends up happening, though, back then, <clears throat> if you didn't have no real friends, you knew it. And that little girl who showed her little tight time, she she made it very clear she didn't have any real friends with her that day. You understand? Because when we went to when when I went to Orange Crush, because that's what's in Savannah, that's the next thing to a freak nick. Um, when we went to Crush, we were six, seven, eight females deep. We had two dudes probably in each car, and that's only because they were family. You know what I'm saying? We just never rolled to the point where we gonna get caught. And our mama going to be, you know, it, it's just, again, we're in a different age now. And then this whole freak Nick, ugh, at the same, on the same time that you're doing this, and they just talked about how Chicago kids were jumping on the cars. I get, the, the footage looks so familiar. And mm -hmm. 
I'm for where I am now, I'm trying to help kids who I used to teach who are now parents, help them understand like what where was the dynamic shift? What what went wrong? Because even though this was a party, you already knew don't bring that back home where your mama, you know, you're going to embarrass your mama. So when they started bringing these cameras out and they started um, getting thirsty, that's what I call it, the thirst trap, um, it went beyond just having a good time. So Kappa Beach Week was, you know, for the Kappa Diamonds. And, and um, you know, everybody had their own little... Uh, I'm trying to guard my words, so forgive me. Um, everybody had their own cliques that they wanted to be a part of. And so they, it's like they pre-clicked. You pre-clicked in high school to be in the clique in college. And that was always, that's where we at now. We just in clicks. We all in high school. And them bringing that back, this, this, this video on Hulu, to me, I feel like Hulu is thirsty. They need some money. And they know that our kind have good stories. Because there, there would be no way in the world this would be on cable. Ever. You understand? Like, this is something you had to go into the dark of the email of the web. Like, somebody had to send you a video to say, hey, did you see so-and-so? You would have never saw this on the internet. So, and these A lot of this stuff has been out on the internet, though. A lot of, like, even in me doing... First of all, Freaknik comes up every year around summertime on Twitter. I don't know if like if you be on around about Twitter, but Twitter is that spot. But for anything makes it to Instagram, YouTube, whatever, it, the conversation cultivates on Twitter always. Twitter is just, it's, it's black Twitter, should I say. Black Twitter. <laughs> we talk about these things. So a lot of these videos, they're not new. And you can even find Freaknik documentaries from eight, nine years ago. Yeah, but they VHS. Somebody was thirsty enough to transpose a VHS tape to make it onto this. That means they wanted people to know. It's a difference. Like, I got VHS tapes to this day of Orange Crush from 2000. Will I ever post it? Heck no. That's my business, and that's my memories, and that's how it goes down. But these people who are putting this information out for they to see they, oh, I can only imagine, you know what I'm saying? I can only imagine how they're sitting there with their kids trying to explain how you going to tell me not to be thoughtish and you were thoughtish. You understand? Like that conversation in the family dynamic is about to change. And that's why I say it's scary. It's not about the people who about to be exposed. It's about the kids who are seeing. It's like, all right, hey, YOLO, if that's how we live. We're going to repeat it. The more we keep showing the history of the, the decisions that weren't always bright, the more they're going to continue them. So I get it. They want to, it's already been out there, but it's it's, it's almost, it's like the internet. You only see what you want to see. You okay, only see so the algorithm to see. I'm if sorry. It's, if it's thirsty, However. Oops, excuse me, I mean for the sound of the Lord. Um, if it's thirsty for, if it's thirsty for people to want to put Freaknik VHSs and, and put it on the internet and trans or do whatever, do you think it was thirsty for the people who did Girls Gone Wild to put yep. that on the internet too? So did, so did Thirst Trap. Uh, when you look at the girls, because I'm telling you, from Jerry Springer, and I only said it because I was a mass communication major. And when I looked at the dynamics of how social media changed just in a general from that old AOL doo, to now, when you realize you can make more with this device, the your privacy and your life was out the window. There was no much, there was no such thing as reality anymore. It was a script. It was allowing you to see what you want them to see. So yeah, you can see all of this in the freak but you'll never see that man that's playing um, on the drums, getting cash, or like we had a dude in Savannah named Piccolo. You'll never see uh, Piccolo in no, in no, uh, documentaries that's going to try to show this community in the way that they want it to be seen because if you really want to see the community you will actually watch not just these publicized freak nicks but the vlogs of the people who actually went there because the culture around them is the reality not what you see and when i say a man on the drums for people who are getting confused because i'm looking at the chat if you've ever went to a southern party where there's people who are begging for money, there are people who beg for money by their instruments and they use a bucket and some sticks and they're always trying to entertain the people who was out there too, spending money and best believe they're getting some money from them people as well. But you're not going to see it on this documentary. 
you're not going to see anything you're not supposed to see, period. Whatever you want to see is what you're going to see. The question is, what you going to do with it? Are you going to allow them to say, oh, this bothers me? Like, I wouldn't shut down who loops. It's there. So what? Let them make their money. Does it affect who I am? Nah. But will it affect the people who's watching it? Heck yeah. And the people who's watching it are not the people in the video. They're not watching it. It's the people who came after the people in the video because they want to know what happened. We were there. Why do we want to watch a video if we were already there? I mean, everybody that was there, if I go to a festival, and a matter of fact, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute this video because I think this video does speak volumes. Hold on. And I see somebody say, am I in agreement with what? I don't understand what agreement would be. Um, is there a question I should be in agreement with? But I don't know. Let's just play this video. It's just a two minute clip. Let's just go ahead and play this so that we can hear. Because if I was one of the ladies in this video I'm about to play, I would want it to be seen too. Absolutely. Yeah, I would have uploaded it. Even And I'm talking about pre-journalistic mindset, even though my journalistic mindset came when I was in like the sixth grade. But mm -hmm. still, some things need to be shown. And that's not being thirsty. That's talking about the reality of our of our community. But let me just go ahead and play. This. However, in the view of NWA. A bitch is a bitch. So rich. Man, it was open season on these women. That's crazy. BET Spring Bling looked more like one of their music videos gone wild. The women bought into their roles as scantily clad sex kittens, and the men act. And I mean, when you listen to what he said in the first couple seconds, it's open season on these women. Excuse me. And sometimes you uh, you attend a party or a gathering, and you don't quite realize how effed up that party or that environment is until you leave and you put two and two together. Like, oh, they were trying to get me to X Y Z. They were preying on me. And sometimes afterwards, yeah, you do build up the courage to share. But even to hear a man say it's open season on these women, you know. Okay. A woman doesn't attend, for, for the most part, a woman doesn't attend a party when they know they're going to be prey and they're going to be taken advantage of. So if I heard, oh, come to this HBCU party, we all smart, we in college, HBCUs link up, boom, and you get there, you realize what it was. Yeah, I would have probably published out some footage too, but let's just go ahead and finish watching this thing. However, in the view of NWA, a bitch is a bitch. So Man, it was open season on these women. BET Spring Bling looked more like one of their music videos gone wild. The women bought into their roles as scantily clad sex kittens, and the men acted out their wildest fantasies, shooting and directing their own hip hop videos. The guys saw Spring Break weekend as an opportunity to cross the line between flirtation and sexual assault. I think a bitch is a bitch. It's funny when I hear women say, when these rappers are calling, you know, women bitches and hoes, they're not talking about me. It's like, yo, they are talking about you. If George Bush was to get on national TV and make a speech and he started calling black people niggas, would you be like, I don't know who George Bush is talking about, but he ain't talking about me. So they're yeah. coming out here with their ass showing, you know what I'm saying? We're going to slap them on the ass. That's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? But we represent all these niggas from j Real, Florida, trying to get on these hoes, slap niggas on the ass, because they representing their fine, salty ass. That's what I'm talking about. I heard you saying something, you're you going to hit somebody with your pocketbook? No, I was gonna hit somebody with my fist. You gonna hit somebody with your fist? Yes. Why? What's what's happening? Well, I'm being touched and it's unwarranted and unwelcome. Do y'all hear? You know, for the people that say these women wanted it, you know, so they they wanted it. They knew what they were signing up for. This woman just so happens to not be outside of the party yet. And sometimes women do smile through awkwardness, whether it's a man disrespecting them verbally, physically. Whatever the case is, this woman is smiling, saying, I'm being touched on, and I'm going to hit him with my fist. And I mean, that was, I mean, such a classy way to go about it. Such a classy way to say it. Because she could have got straight knuck if you buck. But let's not forget these documented moments. You saying something, if you're going to hit somebody with your pocketbook? No, I was going to hit somebody with my fist. You're going to hit somebody with your fist? Yes. Why? What's, what's happening? Well, I'm being touched, and it's unwarranted and unwelcome. 
some people say it's just boys being boys, but I think it has a lot to do with boys figuring out early that girls are there for us to sexually objectify or to be our playthings. Okay, I ain't gonna touch nothing though. Okay, don't touch nothing else. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, it's about to come to our feet. I've been doing a lot of walking around and videotaping and things like that. And a lot of the women are having a real hard time moving through the crowd. Yeah, that's, any... that's one of our biggest problems. As you can see, we're, we're spread kind of thin. We can't be everywhere. So our concern is that somebody's going to be accosted out here and just don't want anybody to get hurt or raped or anything like that. Have you made any arrests? Not so far this weekend. It's been good. I've been molested. They're mad. He tried to take my whole shirt off. What the fuck? OK, so that's, that's that video. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. um, so here's here's my question. So um, the girl with the red hair in the video, right? Mm -hmm. Her response, I don't know if anybody else has, because in the South, um, when you're, when you are, let me just say this, when you are uncomfortable um, in a setting around men, uh, mm -hmm. what comes out your mouth doesn't sound like she's, like she sounds like she's scared to me. Because I've right. said that because you laugh off the fear that you've just been violated. Okay? Right. Now, mind you, she had a group of girls with her. Do you see how many girls she had with her? At that time, you either are in a fight or flight. And when you want to be seen, you ain't going to fight the dude. So the whole, again, I, I my own thing is the question, I, I guess I'm trying to understand is why does it have to be televised? Like, what's the per what's the lesson the person is going to gain from watching the documentary? Because that's my goal point. Because where's the next step? Okay, I think the next step is this stuff could easily be repeated, right? When we talk about a large group, a big group, again, let's see. This was 1994, which is what? Uh, uh, that was my eighth grade year. Almost 30 years ago. Almost 30 years ago. So... If we, if we take all of the elements of what made that party and duplicate it right now, right? 200,000 people, two dozen cops. <laughs> 200,000 people, only two, three dozen cops. Um, no crowd control. You call it freak -nick. You're calling this a hypersexual fest, right? Mm -hmm. And you put all, you combine all of those things in 2023, the same thing's going to happen all over again. And it's supposed to be college oriented, but now you've got people that aren't even in college coming. The the dangers and what, what I think that it'll shed light on how such a large toxic environment can cultivate. That might have been 1994, but if we put all of the contributing factors, the lack of security, the lack of risk management, put all that into a boiling pot again, along with the 200,000 people, some of the very same things would more than likely repeat themselves. How can we avoid this? On a personal note, as women and as party organizers and planners and, um, and, and, and everything else, there were some people, a great amount of people who have spoken up about being sexually assaulted and taken advantage of. And there was even gun violence there and regular assault. How can we avoid this? Because just because it was 1994, it's no different than what would happen in this day and age if we put all those things in a pot and melt it down again. What should we not be doing? What should we be calling our homeboys out? Let's see. We, we, we see the cat calling and the turning the blind eye to my homie ripping this woman out the car and ripping her clothes off. And she's fighting for her life and she don't want no part of this. Y'all need to be calling these niggas out. Y'all need to stop. Oh, it's, uh, this is about to paint all black men as predators. No, you need to. You see your man. Okay. There's videos present day of women going to the gas station, and it's not even all the way dark outside. And she's the only one, and you got uh, 10 men surrounding her, and they're hounding her. That's predatory. Call that shit out. Stop acting like it's cool or it's party behavior or it's okay. It's normalized because people want to sweep it under the rug and not have the conversation. That's the okay. problem. Gotcha. So here's my question. My my last and I'm gonna go because I got a, a meeting. So this is just freak Nick. Is is the world and everyone that's fighting for these causes? Because I'm with it. But are y'all really ready to deep dive into beyond freak Nick? Are you ready to go to Greek Fest? Because I was there. Are you ready to go to like I said, Myrtle Beach, Black Black Bike Beach is around the corner. 
are you ready to deep down to all of the little nits and crannies or are we going to find an actual solution to cap it off? Because just showing this documentary is not going to help it. Especially right. not in summer. We can, teens we can, watching Hulu. Right. We can get into all the nooks and crannies, but I guarantee you all of these nooks and crannies have commonalities. There are a lot of similar turning of the blind eye, the lack of authority and people protecting the attendees of these different places. Like I said, whether it ends in assault, the sexual or regular assault or death. When we look at the crowd control, the, the, the lapse in, in governance with Astro World and Travis Scott, that was a large crowd gone wild. And that's why there was so many fatalities and effed up things that happened. So we can get into all the nooks and crannies, but when we create the Venn diagram between all of those things, those commonalities, that's where the quote unquote, there is no quote one solution. Just have security at all those places. It's not that simple. There's a lot of nuance, right? And again, the nook and cranny of girls gone wild, been done several times throughout history. Right. So when we get into all these different places, there are commonalities and there are things that these these people who are organizing these events need to be doing. But also us as being brethren and sister of our friends and our family, we need to call out our friends, whether it be our brothers, our cousins, niggas with homeboys. Yo, don't do that. That shit ain't cool. That's corny. Leave that girl alone. Leave that woman alone. That's corny. And that's the type of speak up that we need more about. But there are a lot of men who pretend like that shit don't happen around them or like that behavior doesn't exist within their circle. And it does because they're not bold enough to clear that throat and call that shit corny. Cat calling a woman, following her to her car, chasing her down in the middle of the night because she's just trying to get gas. And it's one in the morning and she just got off at work. It's corny to act like that shit is funny when your nigga is running a woman down. And until they keep seeing it over and the more and more we speak up about it and they act like it's not a thing. Because again, I could speak up about being harassed at one, two o'clock in the morning, getting off work from the bar and being ran down at the police station. But guess what? I'll go on Twitter. Or I'll go somewhere and I'll talk about it. And you know what they're going to say? That's not all black men. That don't happen a lot. That's an isolated incident. And really, it happens way more often than not. And unfortunately, it's going to take this being televised. And what, what, what I can appreciate about it is that it's being told by black voices through the black lens. And from the black perspective and experience and people who even contributed to that type of behavior and created music that cultivated that type of stuff. We would get upset if it was a white person who spoke to black people this way. But instead, mm -hmm. the story is being told by Jermaine Dupree, e. Frank Williams, Uncle Luke, Alex Avant, Nikki Biles, Jay Allen. These are black people who are not going to sit here and act like this shit didn't happen because it still happened in 2023. Gotcha. I think um, first I'm, I'm going to apologize because I think your 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 people in your chat don't understand what I'm trying to say. Um, my whole purpose of getting on your platform today was to ask as a call to action with Plain as Jane, what would be the next steps? Because I'm not saying that Hulu shouldn't do it. It's just the point that everybody goes back and forth with their opinions and their judgment and don't do nothing. Like a lot of people in your chat don't know me. So their opinions really don't matter. The overall yeah, thing it, I, I was trying difficult. to get. I, it, I, I mean, I, I get you clearing yourself with the chat, but I'm, you know, me and yeah, you, the chat. I don't, I don't look, I'm, I'm only reason I'm asking you is because I'm talking to former students I've taught about their, their involvement in these Black Beach Week events and how to get to the point across of their age bracket of now what? That, yeah, we exposed it. Now what? What you going to do? Because at the end of the day, I done been arrested for, I for, think, for backing up people and, and I they think, don't want to do think, it. I think that that's the call to action. What we're missing, what we lack sometimes in our communities is accountability and calling our friends out for their Calling them out. And I feel like that's what it's really going to... Are, are, are we going to depend on the police to protect us? Us niggas? <laughs> Uh, is it really going to take more police presence to keep us safe at a large venue or a large concert? You know, it's going to take a lot of different things to happen. But most importantly, if we can see, listen, one thing that we say on Twitter all the time is we ain't had a serious conversation since the civil rights movement. We ain't had a serious conversation and we don't like necessarily holding others accountable, especially when it comes to some black men who need to be held accountable because they take it as a bullet to the chest. Sometimes they act like the accountability is an attack. So what's the next move is to normalize these conversations in the barbershops, in the hair salons, 
during kitchen table talk so that you can really start to demonize and villainize your friends who are doing this shit and it's just culturally acceptable because, well, she was dressed that way, so yeah, I touched her ass. No, 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 because that leads to something else that leads to something else and she didn't want none of that shit. She just wanted to wear her fucking fashion over Shane outfit tonight. She didn't ask for all that. So demonize it and call them out and verbally bash them for that shit that's what really needs to happen but it's not there's no one thing that's going to happen to make the whole community be like you know what call it out because a lot of them are denying that it takes place a lot of them a lot of them a lot and i see this day in and day out on twitter that that ain't all of us that's just some of us meanwhile we're looking at a whole mob a sea of niggas doing this shit and they still that's not happening that ain't and it's totally fucking happening. It was happening then, and it's happening now. Like, that's my point. That, that's what I think that the collective, but it's going to take more than one conversation. And quite frankly, it's going to take more than one documentary to really, to really wake it up. It's going to take more than one documentary for us to really get on one page and be like, that's not cool. I mean, hell, the Me Too movement came and some people got irritated by it. But now, you know, we're at a different point. We had a different point. So um, that's that. I think I think she dropped off. Um, I'm good. My spurs and I sent with this. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, it is what it is. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 answer the question, you know. And, you know, as, as a black woman, we speak very passionately. I've been nothing but respect. Okay. But she decided to step away and that's okay. Okay. Um, but, you know, th th there's a lack of accountability in our in, in, in our community sometimes not with everyone not with every environment not with every topic right but we do need to talk about this <laughs> we this absolutely needs to be a regular conversation and i guarantee you if it was any of your children who experienced something like this it wouldn't be Shh, keep it quiet don't show it because what's it gonna do if you talk about it Shh, it ain't gonna do nothing you thirsty because you you want to expose the people or the environment and the behaviors that contribute to this happening to countless victims. Shh, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Shh. Suppress it. I guarantee you if that was your, your daughter, your sister, your cousin, your neighbor, your whoever, you wouldn't be encouraging them to keep quiet about it. You wouldn't. But, you know, you know people have different opinions. I do welcome different opinions. That was a nice exchange. She had to drop because she said, I'm sorry, this doesn't sit right. My spirit is not sitting right with this. My apologies. Okay. My apologies too, if there was some disconnect, but you know, I, I do think that this was a very crucial phone call and I do appreciate you calling in. Okay. Um, so, okay. We've got a couple other callers. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we got a couple other callers. Roxanne Roxanne is next. We'll see if we can get through these other callers. I do believe from what I've seen in the chat, Roxanne Roxanne was at the Freak Nick. Um, the chat be moving so fast, baby. I can't, I can't keep up with everything. Um, but let's get to Roxanne Roxanne, the rest of our callers, and we're gonna get out of here. I hope y'all are enjoying the show. Drop some pancakes, let's keep it pushing. Got a little tense. But it's, it's, it's a very necessary discussion in all love, to be honest. So, Roxanne, you are next. Miss Nola, Disciple of God, Princess is here. Bronze is here. I'll probably bring Bronze up first. All right. Drop some pancakes in the chat. Hit thumbs up. We'll be right back. The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? So wait a minute, you ain't joined the channel yet so that you can access special perks over here with the plainest Jane? Hey, roll us on your wrist of plain Jane. Ooh, watch this. Hey, I'm the plainest Jane. I'm a cultural commentator and informant, and I provide sticky coverage on trending stories, black news, black culture, and everyday topics with a sticky abstract perspective. <laughs> so get familiar with the perks. I've carefully curated all of these things, and it's just a little exclusive glaze to amplify the way that you express yourself. <laughs> so get comfortable, get used to our official emoji over here that is the pancake stack, because it's always sticky in Hollywood and in real life, and especially when you spend the time over here with the plainest Jane. 
Like I said, I hope you enjoy the exclusive glaze that I provided for you to amplify the way you express yourself. And I hope you enjoy the digital vibe. Hey, listen, I always want you to keep it sticky, but be sure to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. But most importantly, I hope that you're feeling all right and hopefully you've had some time to tackle some of your invisible problems. I know I got a couple of new subscribers and I just want to say thank y'all. I really do appreciate you. And if you're not quite feeling all right, this channel right here, once you join, it's going to help you kick back and decompress always, but it'll also keep you in the know with what's happening with the best black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So again, get comfortable. The first drink is on me, I right? Act like you got some sense, and I'll see you around. But don't forget to keep it sticky 24-7 by following me on Instagram, but hit that notification bell so that you always know when I upload and you get your dose of syrup first. Now with all that... All right, all right. I had to cut the commercial short because we got some callers we need to get in. Bronze, what is going on? Do we got our technical difficulties fixed? I don't... Can you hear me? Let's see. Do I hear an echo? You sound amazing. Okay, what are your thoughts real Thank quick? Thank you. Okay, so I wasn't there in 94, but I went in 96. That was just the end of my sophomore... No, end of my freshman year. I went to school in the AU Center, which is the Atlanta University Center that has all the black colleges in that one spot. And we used to have to fight to get back on campus. I've been that girl to walk to the gas station and the gas station be crowded and have to walk all the way back home because I didn't want to get harassed. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I had a good time. But also I had friends. My friends was not letting me get snatched out the car. If I got snatched out the car, they was coming with me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just and another thing was at that time I was a criminal justice major and our, you know, instructors would always say, whatever you do now will always come back to haunt you. So be careful what you do. So I was like, no, you are not recording me. Don't mm -hmm. touch me. So you, and sometimes you can joke it off. It was just like, you just had to know basic problem solving almost, but yeah, some of that stuff shouldn't have gone on, but it was still fun. Mm -hmm. But yeah. people need to police their behavior. A lot yeah. of men didn't know how to act back then. Just because I'm wearing these shorts don't mean you can smack me on my butt. Right. I mean, just say, hey, hey, girl, what's up? I used to tell them that. And they used to be like, okay, okay, I got you. So, I don't know. I know when I heard about the documentary, I was like, um, why? <laughs> why? Why is that a thing? I had no idea all these other documentaries is out there about Freak Nick on YouTube. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I had no idea. So I was just like, what? And what are they taking VHS tapes? And then they were, I found out and I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Yep. Yeah. A lot of my friends are scared. Don't get me wrong. Some of them are scared. <laughs> no, really. Oh, yeah. Because I mean, they're, they're, if I was still in my old profession, I'd probably be nervous too. Yeah. I feel like profession or not, I would just be nervous for how my peers, my neighbors, my kids, nieces, nephews, family would like look at me if if they knew that. That's true, but also, and I'm not, please don't think I'm excusing anybody's behavior, <laughs> but our community knew what it was. They knew about Freak Me. So everybody on the outside is gonna be like, oh my God, my mom knew I was there. I feel like yeah. you might have known about Freak Nick and you might have even had some plans to sit in the back seat and do some raunchy things with somebody. But that's based off consent. You know Right. What I mean? That's two consenting adults. Right. Sober, hopefully. You know, that because right. that that happened too. I mean, I didn't I didn't have been grabbed and smacked, but at the same time, I know I can't run up and be like, I'm gonna beat your butt for touching me. It's more like, hey man, don't do that. I mean, because if sometimes, his don't tell him, I'm gonna say it. Just like you were saying earlier about like solving an equation about how to get harassed the least or avoid harassment. Yes. As a woman, I've been in these situations where if I flare up and I'm like, get your hands off me, da da da, they get a little more excited about that. And they yep. tend to sometimes, and I'm talking people of all colors. I'm, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And just predators in general. And they get a little excited about it and they decide to band together and protect and help somebody isolate you. So you're better off, depending on the environment and the day and how you clock it, based on your situational awareness, you might be better off saying, uh-uh, I'm not playing that. Or putting your uh-uh and keep, you know, because if you if you flare up and there's not a woman around you to help yep. or men that you know are really going to come to your aid, that loud yep. flare up might unfortunately 
make it work. Go the wrong way. Yeah, it can go the wrong way. How you got to sort through, okay, what's the best way to go about this based off this crowd? How many times have I been here? What do they do? Maybe I should just keep yep. quiet about not letting it ride. Or maybe I should just create a real serious space. Like, mm -mm, like do I want to walk through that crowd? Should I just walk down this other sidewalk and call it a day? Yeah, it's just it's a lot of decisions you have to make. But yep. at the same time, you know, a lot of those guys didn't. Know, I mean, I'm not going to say guys because I don't want men to say that I'm dogging them out. But a lot of people didn't know how to act, especially when they got drunk and when they got high. And then they're in. It was, I've seen some things during Freak Me that was just like, what? <laughs> that, I just thought I was doing something in my little bitty shorts. That, that, that was, mm -mm. Busy to see when a yellow polka dot bikini, okay? <laughs> I just wanted to look cute. <laughs> I just wanted to look cute. Yeah, I even went to Daytona a couple times. And even in Daytona, to you be honest with you, I had a heart. You want to show off your body while you got the body. You and that's yeah. the thing. When your peoples be like, you ain't always gonna be that small. You be like, oh shit, well, yep. shit well, it. let me flaunt it, okay? Oh, exactly. Me... <laughs> With planet photography, you've been in the chat a lot talking about white people, and we we've already been there. If you late, maybe you need to rewind. Right? A predator is a predator, no matter if he's white, black, purple, blue, orange, or um, if he's the texture of popcorn ceiling paint. Right? The white folks have been called out, right? And the and the and the white predatory festivals and spring break gatherings have been called to the table. A whole documentary, I get it, you're late, right? But there's been a whole documentary on Girls Gone Wild, because I saw you reference that um earlier in the chat as well. He's been Isn't there one also about the um uh what was it, the ninety nine Woodstock reunion thing where right, all I've those sexual assaults happened? So, you know, the Girls Gone Wild thing, they have been exposed and they have been dragged, rightfully so. Um, and this came out on TNT, which is bigger than Hulu. Let's go ahead and say that. If you want to act like, oh, Hulu calling out one and not the other. Like that, TNT is bigger than Hulu. And this man's uh, mugshot is here rightfully because he was known for all of the underage mess and crap he used to do his name is joe francis okay there's this mugshot battery false imprisonment intimidation of a witness prostitution child pornography he felt entitled to all of the women from girls gone wild so he definitely was called out and now you've moved the goalpost to talk about r kelly so let's go ahead and take the attention off you see because i'm trying to help you understand that the white people are called to the table as well but now you're going into talking about r kelly who was somebody that i'm infamous for calling out okay so we're not we're not playing these Olympics with you. We're staying to task and black women deserve protection, too, no matter what they're wearing or no matter the name of the festival. Uh, nonetheless, do you have any final um, points for us bronze before we get on to the next caller? I I'm, I guess I'm what would be considered an auntie. And I just wanted to ask some of y'all, what, what, <laughs> what, what was the fascination with, you know, I don't know. Like, I guess because I was there, it was just like, OK, whatever. It was freaky. But, like, were documentaries really necessary? I mean, who... Is it just I for... Alive, I was alive in 1993 or oh, four, but I don't remember that. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, it's, I'm old, Jane. <laughs> I, I find the people who, you know, the people who I talk to Freak Nick about, most of them, they had a really good time. I'm honestly not personally cool or acquaintances with anybody who went to Freak Nick and had a terrible experience, but that doesn't negate it mean that terrible. nobody did. So when I'm hearing about Freak Nick from the people that I'm cool and associates with, when they going down memory lane, they just telling us about what they used to do and one that they used to have. It's through their memory only and their experience, which, mm -hmm. you know, those one to two dozen people don't make up for the hundreds of thousands of people that attended that thing and may have experienced something that was less than positive. Like I said, I, I do think that it's, it's, it's a lesson and a telltale sign to large gathering festival like things gone wrong in 2024, no matter what color. There were some areas of opportunity that were missed that could have not necessarily eliminated, but definitely alleviated a lot of what the, the victims may have endured during that time. And I, they, they have a right to tell their story. And You're it right. can be a, a learning lesson for other for other people. You know what I mean? You go to these festivals, who you going with? Are you are you taking protection? Where are you parking? Are you taking, you know what I mean? 
All right, the right. Small little things like it feeds into that equation. You remember how we were talking about the equation of how do I get out of this or they just and you got to be I feel like listening to the nuances of other people's stories can also help with other people's little equations of how to avoid or get out of being assaulted in whatever way. You're right. That makes a lot of sense. I'm all for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all I'm all for it. So y'all have a good time and, you know, and just, I think the, what I'm trying to say is that people need to watch each other's back more when you're and, out yeah. at these events. You got to have a real friend. Don't be on some, oh, I know this girl from Instagram and we're going to go to the club. Do you really know this girl? Is she going to leave you if somebody takes advantage of you? Is she going to, you know, it, people just need to think. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm running out. I'm running out. People are going to tell me to get off the phone. So I'm. I got you. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. <laughs> I appreciate you calling in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. All right. I'm trying to get Roxanne. Roxanne on here. And I think Roxanne is having technical difficulties because she keep like popping up and then it say connection issue. And then, and then she dropped. I really want to get Roxanne on here. Um, we got a guy back here, okay? Disciple of God, Baltimore, what's going on? Talk about it. What's going on with it? What is yeah, happening? Got back here. Now, I ain't going to hold you. I wasn't, I wasn't there back then. Wasn't there until 98. But it's the first time I'm hearing about this documentary. And they some sick niggas. They some sick, sick niggas. Heroes, for sure. And you know what happened every time these documentaries come out, bro. Somebody going to jail. If not, a lot of people going to jail. I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah. I think I think the I think the older generation now, as much as they talk shit about us, I think they might be starting to regret it now. I think yeah. they might be scrambling right now. Hold on real quick. Roxanne, I see you back here and I wanna bring you up, but it seems like there's something wrong with your camera. It says device is not connected. I definitely wanna bring you up, Roxanne. I just wanna let you know. If you wanna okay. knock me down. Yeah, if you want. Okay, thank you so much. Because Rox Roxanne been trying for a minute. I mean, she literally been trying for like an hour. Let me get her up here real quick. Roxanne, Roxanne, what is going on? Thank you so much for calling in, okay? Hey, hey, hey. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. I can hear you. Woo! I made it, girl. Been sitting here for a long time. Was about to go in Kroger and get me some wine. But <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So... I'm from Atlanta, Georgia Peace, born and raised. And okay. yes, I was grown as heck or hanging around the wrong crowd because I was in high school in 94, 95. Freak me. So in 94, I went and I was looking foolish out there because my homegirl had on some Daisy Dukes, a bra top. And I'm like, oh my gosh, all the attention she was getting, right? So as the night went on, I'm thinking like, oh man, this is crazy. These guys just keep touching her and, but they were taking, it started off that first year, like pretty calm. They're just kind of like flirting, touching a little bit, asking to take pictures. Okay. So the next, what was it? Probably the next day I came out, I said, well, I'm going to try to upgrade my outfit a little bit, but I don't feel comfortable wearing what she's wearing. Cause you know, I was young. Um, I was dating guys, but I didn't want to, I don't know. I didn't want to be labeled as, you know, uh, 304 like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, I was like, well, that's my girlfriend doing her thing. But I'm like, well, they were teasing me about what I was wearing. So the next day I thought I had did something, had this little outfit on. Um, I didn't get as much attention as her, but the same thing. It was kind of like guys kind of groping just a little bit for hugs and things like that. Fast forward the next year. I said, okay, I'm ready. I'm going. So I go out there. When I tell you the Atlanta traffic was so bad, we had beepers back then. We didn't have cell phones. Okay. We had pagers. Okay. We had pagers. And I kept beeping my friend. You know, we have what's called martyr here. So I was on the martyr, you know, the public transportation. And I was supposed to meet with this same girlfriend of mine. And so, because I wasn't telling my mom that's where I was going now. So, you know how it is. So, you know, she did the same thing, I guess. But 
I'm paging her and I'm paging her. I'm supposed to be meeting her at Greenbrier Mall. No one from anybody on the line that's from Atlanta, they know about Greenbrier Mall. So I get to the mall and I'm like, oh my God. It was chaotic. When I tell you those guys were fondling, groping, and if you didn't let them touch you, they were like cursing you out, hitting you, and pouring beer. I had a girl standing right next to me. Um, and you know, she had a she did have a very provocative outfit on compared to mine, but I thought I was doing it. Jane, I had on my baby doll skirt. Back then we wore the little crop tops with the baby doll. It's like, you know, I'm I'm 5'10", so I'm, I'm pretty tall. So if I wear a little mini skirt. You know, you might see a little something if I've been down to tie my shoe. But, you know, that's as far as I went. But when I tell you that was the worst night of my life, I never found my friend. The traffic was so bad. It was so chaotic. Then when I wanted to get back to the bus, I couldn't get back to the bus. I remember being so scared and afraid because I was just like, man, I can't find a set. I can't find a, a, a payphone, and so it got to the point. I'm just walking and walking and walking, hoping that I run into somebody. And as it started to progress and get dark, I finally ran into my friend's uncle and cousin. Okay, so get in the car with them, thinking, "Oh, it's all good," but we're trapped in traffic for hours. Now my mom doesn't know where I am. I still, again, I know I had no business out there. How old were you? I'm sorry, go ahead. How old was you? I would say about 16. Child. I had no, and that's why I've been waiting so long because it was a caller on here. Damn, she dropped off. Oh, her internet. That shit was getting good, y'all. Oh, Hell my yeah. goodness. She said, I ran into my friends. I got excited. Then she said, Uncle. I'm like, oh, shit. Well, where's your <laughs> friend? Then she said she was 16. God damn. Wait, wait a minute, she back. Hold up, what's going on? Am I back? Yes, you back. Okay, so you were 16. What happened? You was in the car. Your parents didn't know where you was. What happened next? Yes, so it was so crazy out there. There was so much violence and things going on. I don't know. That, that had to be 95 or 96. But all I know is I was scared for my life. I never made it home until the next day around 4 a.m. 4 a.m. So when I tell you I went there and even though I didn't have as traumatic experience as the some of the girls that are on the documentary and things like that, and some of the ladies that I seen, um, they were old. I could tell they were college, you know, and above. There were neighborhood people there. I grew up in the project. So I saw some people from my hood that I'm like, you ain't up in nobody's college. So, but yeah, we were all there, but I didn't have a traumatic experience experience personally but the things i saw scared me to death and for people to sit up and say um oh well why are they showing it because it needs to be known that it happened and for the people that went through the, the experience maybe they want it to be seen to acknowledge what they went through you know what i mean because i witnessed mm -hmm. a lot of things but those things didn't happen to me per se so i just want to say that i support the documentary and the only thing that I don't support, I feel like they should, you know, get consent to or maybe blur out their faces for the, the scenes that are more graphic. Yeah. Other than that, I totally support it. I feel like it's necessary because look what happened in that. Um, I think it was Florida where it was so chaotic down there this recently is for spring break. And I went to yeah, Daytona you know, 99. You know, like, forget them, girl. What happened to your friend? You said you never found her. What's going on? OK, so this is the tea. When. You realize, I realized that that was not my real friend. She had went somewhere else in the opposite direction. <laughs> and she never looked for me. She never oh. looked for me. So <laughs> needless to say, we were no longer friends after that. We were no longer friends. Girl. <laughs> oh, she ain't shit. And I was on punishment for like a month because my mom had the police waiting for me when I got home. <laughs> Wait a minute, you said so. she talked. <laughs> That's what I get, right? <laughs> girl, if you watching, girl, F you, okay? 
I know, right? I know, right? We haven't been friends since, but hey, you know, I'm just I'm blessed that I made it home. I wasn't great. Yes, I was groped, you know. Um, but hey, I just did what I needed to do until I finally saw somebody that I knew and felt safe with. And I don't know, we were just still out having fun in traffic, and I didn't get home till 4 a.m. And all I know is I would I never did that again. You didn't have to worry about me until I graduated and I went to Daytona. Daytona, I wore, I think I wore shorts and pants the whole time. I didn't want no problems. <laughs> not, not blaming anybody else. Just saying my experience from Freaknik made me feel like I didn't want all of that attention because I knew what straight. happened. You got straight yeah. Straight. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I just wanted to share that experience, you know, being that I'm from here and I did go and I wasn't in college and acknowledge that a lot of people just from the whole city and the neighborhoods were there and we shouldn't have been, but that doesn't mean that we were the one that brought the chaos, but still a lot of things happen and I still support the documentary and I think a lot of the guys and the ladies need to be held accountable because, you know, you know, you have to, you know, um, handle yourself accordingly, you know. I didn't care myself in that way, like my friends, you know. So, oh my, the bush it was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep, really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. I'm grateful that you are still here to tell your story, ma'am. Honestly, honestly, because. Shorty turned the other cheek and you were worried about her cheeks and your cheeks and she busy over here being a backstab. But that's horrible. That's horrible. She need her ass beat. She do. But you know what? You know, karma going to get her. Karma gonna yeah, it's all good. But that was all I had wanted to say. I got to go get these groceries. <laughs> I appreciate you in this on, 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 on this good Sunday. Um, calling in about your experience during Freak Week. I love the fact that the people who attended trust uh, trust this platform because there's no shame, right? You know, you know right? There's no shame in, in attending and thinking you're about to have a good old funky HBCU time. Hello, shout out to Morgan State University. That's where I went. But when it turns into something different, you shouldn't be to blame, right? Uh, when yeah, people, your friend was way out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What did she gain from Got that? It. Um, thank you so much for calling in. I got a couple other callers to get to, but um, I will be keeping keeping an eye out for you, Roxanne. Roxanne, thank you for watching the call in. All right, take care. Bye bye. Okay. All right, Miss Nola, what is going on? I thank you for calling in. What are your thoughts on Freaknik? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, so I'm a little age, forty eight. I attended. Okay, forty eight years young. <laughs> I attended a few Freakniks, a few Daytona Spring Breaks. I mostly agree with Roxanne. Um, you know, it happened. And in my opinion, this documentary, um, all of the exposure with Robert Sylvester, all of these things are needed to kind of start eating away at the elephant in the room, which is, in my opinion, um, essay being kept and swept under the rug within our community. The only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So if you expose these things, you know, we, we, we can't focus on what the other communities are doing. We have to kind of work on ourselves first. And the only way um, to address those things is to acknowledge them, right? We can't, we can't sweep them under the rug. We can't, um, act like they didn't exist. I definitely agree with blurring the faces of the people who were groped and assaulted. It was only the grace of God that kept me from that. Um, despite what the other young lady said, I traveled in packs, mixed sex group packs. We had men and women in our groups. Doesn't matter. I've seen women um, try to I'm sorry. I got I to gotta point out what you said because the chat is agreeing too. You said talking about addressing the elephant in the room. The only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time, baby. That's it. Let, when I tell you I'm going to steal that. So when you hear that in upcoming videos, I'm letting you know I'm stealing it. 
Okay. Take it. Take it. I'm going to say it on Twitter too. Just know I'm stealing it. Take it. Take it. Because it's true. You know, we, we can't we can't think that this documentary is going to solve all of the problems surrounding essay. We right. can't think that um, the, you know, Robert Sylvester stuff is going to solve all of the problems uh, surrounding entertainers using their fame to do whatever they do. All of this stuff, um, all of this stuff happens. It's been happening. You know, I had a, a, a talk with one of my aunts yesterday and she told me um, something about a man who grew up right next door. I had no clue. I just knew I never liked him. Had no clue he was molesting people within his family for decades. Decades. And I'm talking men, well, boys and girls. So this kind of stuff happens all the time. Sometimes we, you know, don't know about it. In that particular situation, his brothers and sisters shielded him while he harmed their children. So, you know, like I said, you, you got to address this stuff. It doesn't just get fixed without addressing it. It's going to be a lot of hurt feelings, but, you know, fuck them. It just, it just has to happen. So, um, but back to what I was saying, the other woman, she kind of implied that your response to someone's assaulting you um, kind of dictates what would happen next. No, ma'am. I've seen women um, try to defend themselves in a, in a more demure way. And I've seen women be more aggressive with defending themselves. It does not work out. You have mob mentality that starts, you know, um, who cares if the two men in your group try to defend you against 15 Negroes who want to rub up on you? It's not going to happen. So to blame anyone other than the person who is uh, putting their hands on someone without being invited to do so. And a, if a visual invite is not an invite. Me walking around with my you know short shorts on is not an invitation. And that's not even a visual invite, in my opinion. It might be visually appealing for you. It may stimulate me because I feel like I got a nice body. So I'm going to show it, right? And that's that's not even something that... Holly Berry is still on her balcony in a, a thong bikini, right? So right. it's not even like, oh, just 20-year-olds. When people feel like they got a nice body, sometimes they show it. If it's not against their religion, then they might show it. That's not open season, right? <laughs> just like the guy was saying in the thing that I... It's open season for these women. Are you are you out of his mind? Serious? You serious? He's out of his mind. And that's what lets you know they're incels that don't ever get no not a mean because I mean I can't get to the mind of an R word, but it's like why not just want to do it with a woman that but yeah. to you? But like, I, I mean, think about it. If if that is a person's mentality, they are well on their way to thinking as in our word. Yeah. They're, they're well on their way. And if you combine a large group of those people in one place, there's no control in that. There right. is no control in that. So like I said, a large group, a large I, group. A and, large and, group. And again, I think that this, sadly, I think that it ties into the marketing. I think that it should have never been called Freaking. I think that... I, Maybe if they even had some battle rapper booth where it was the Freaknik booth where you had the little Kim-esque type rappers, rappers, mm -hmm. um, you want a cheap trick, you better go on a Freaknik. You got so I mean, like it definitely had a cultural impact. It did, but I think that calling it that, like, what's a freak? A, a highly sexual. A mm -hmm. high, I think that the marketing. It missed the mark, and I do think that it contributed to the subconscious mindset of people on their way into attending, right? Like, so is it the fault of the the woman? And I forget her name, and I don't even want to put her name out there because she's actually disowned Freaknik because it turned into something way beyond what she created mm -hmm. for the 60 people who showed up to the first annual Freaknik situation. If I, I feel like if she could go back, she would have and she should have named it something different. Why would you well, name an academic something on an academic campus for the students a freaky Nick? 
a freak nick. Mm -hmm. Show freak on. Yeah. The marketing was a bit problematic, but the name of it, there's no way that anybody could blame a rape on the name of the event. Do you get what I'm saying? Absolutely. The factor, yes. But the reason why somebody raped was called Freak Nick. No, not at all. Not, not at all. Not at all. And I think it kind of, um, I can't think of the lady's name right now. I'm sure you probably know who I'm talking about, though. Um, she had the, the Congresswoman, she had the historic uh, back and forth with two live crew. Okay. I cannot think of her name. But it's almost like, um, you know, sometimes people have the foresight to recognize a situation before it happens. You know, she, she raised these issues about the types of uh, images and the types of languages that were, were used in, in, you know, to live cruise music. I cannot think of that woman's name. I'm going to think of it as soon as I hang up, though. Um, it always, it's always like that. <laughs> but... You know, back then, it was looked at as, oh, she's um, she's hating. You know, she she's trying to uh, um, censor us and all this the people stuff. In the chat, are saying Dolores Tucker? Um, I'm sitting in front of the computer. Let me see. That 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 might be it. Okay, let's get into this comment right here. Red Planet Photography, who has been in the chat, whatever, most of what they've said I've disagreed with. I agree. SA is unacceptable, but call out predators like Cardi B, too. You're right. Cardi okay, B sir. Yes. She is absolutely a predator, and she wanted to call out, what you call it, the the something, something, De Lama guy who told the kid to suck his tongue. Yeah, the Dalai Lama dude. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I can't give... A predator speak. Uh, let's just say we had a rapist next to another rapist calling out a rapist. Am I going to disregard what one rapist is saying about another? Clearly, they know rapist mentality, just like with Cardi. You know, Cardi ha has. Uh, is she still a predator? I don't know, but she's definitely been very open with some of her predatory ways, with drugging men, robbing them, and even having them sodomized against their will because she wanted to get back or whatever her little gang was. Mm -hmm. Ever she mm -hmm. So am I one of those ones that's going to take up for Cardi and take her, oh, protect the kids? Yeah, I'll, it, it'll go in one ear and out the other. It doesn't take a, a, a Cardi B to let us know that we need to protect our kids. But is Cardi B a predator? Those videos speak volumes before she got her teeth fixed, before she got any surgery. To Absolutely. Absolutely. Cardi is definitely a predator. When you prey upon someone and then she excuses it with, Oh, well, um, <clears throat> he wanted to buy some pussy, buying some pussy and drugging and, and, and taking his money and having him sodomized and tricking him into dealing with the trans, you know, person. It's not the same. Predatory, 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 predatory. And I'm sorry. Is a broken clock right two times a day? Yeah. Just like Azalea Banks is right two times a day. Candace Owens is right two times a day. Every now and then. They they have a point, but for a predator to call out another predator is uh is uh is something, right? And and let's just say this: if a rapist is going to tell me about another rapist, if a thief is going to tell me about another thief, it doesn't mean that I'm saying everything you say and throw out the window. It just means that I'm gonna call you a hypocrite, right? You really it, know the spirit of said predator if you're a predator, or a thief if you're a thief, or a rapist if you're yeah, you know that mentality. I might take it in my ear, but I'm not about to sit down and say, you know what, you preaching gospel, you deserve to have the 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 mouthpiece that speaks to the masses to speak out against, especially when you haven't had a come to Jesus moment and knelt at the at the at the at the, at the altar to say, you know what, what I did was wrong. Instead, she's excusing it and saying those niggas wanted to buy ass and buying ass and being drugged and sodomized is not the same. But I'm it's not. not. Another it's thing. not, but but um, what's his name, Mister uh, Red Planet Photography? It, he's coming across as a apologist, a what about is, um, you know, just because you point out that I'm stealing while you're stealing means nothing. We're both stealing, so I, I, I'm just gonna have to ignore that part of the chat. But what I was saying was that. Um, the lady had the forethought to recognize that if we kept on in the direction that we were going, as far as the music, we would slowly degrade into where we are now, to be honest, where the music is very degraded. Now, some of it might be a bop as far as the beat goes, 
but it, the, the lyrics are they're they're harsh. They're tearing us down in some ways. And you have this group think mentality with the kids. You know, have you ever tried to talk to somebody in their teens and twenties? Sometimes it's difficult. It's, it's, it's very difficult. difficult. It's very difficult to find their 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 line of thinking. It's like, wait a minute, what are you basing this on? You know, TikTok is the source of news. There's no fact checking. So if you have a whole race of us doing that, you know, we, we're going down a slippery slope. You know, I could sit here and talk with you about all that for days and days. But back to my original point. We have a lot of ailments within this community that we need to address. We're only going to address them a little bit at a time. We are so far um, behind other groups of people to no fault of our own, but we are expected to dig ourselves out of this. Sometimes that seems impossible. It's exhausting. You know, while, while uh, a segment of our population is trying to help us, Sometimes it seems like we're fighting against ourselves, and um, this whole this whole essay thing it has to be addressed. You know, it has to be addressed, and the only way to address it is to acknowledge that it happens. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate you. You are definitely one of the ride or dies. You might not be a day one, but you like a day four. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> I don't know how far back before I was I was with you before they they stole from you. I know, right? I so was definitely there. That's that's almost that's almost kind of like a day one for real. That's that's like a day three. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't I don't always catch the bus. I usually catch the replay, but you know, I always enjoy it. And thank you, know. you and keep doing it. And um, my only little note to you is never be. Uh, so willing to give to us that you forget to take time for yourself because I've seen you do that. Right. I do I do it a lot. That's why I've been gone for a week in what one or two days. I'm like, let me make sure I'm okay. Cause sometimes I misjudge if I'm okay. Did I did I have enough sleep? Did I have enough time? Like am I in too much of a mood where I haven't had enough mood me time that I'm about to be cheat to the chat or whatever. So I'm like let me just take some time off and give and fill my cup and fill my cup and let it overflow it then I can give to them. That's um, right. That's so, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get better for that. And I thank you for not only realizing that, but letting me, let me know that. Like I said, sometimes you got to hold your people accountable. And sometimes I'm not accountable for um, prioritizing my self-care. Sometimes I prioritize YouTube more than anything else. And sometimes to a fault. So, well, as long as you don't get up here asking people to press one, if they understand your rights, I guess you can... <laughs> Yeah. You'll be all right. Okay, okay, because Ellie, Ellie can't wrong, baby, because y'all understand my brain <laughs> ain't got nothing to do with my freedom. <laughs> Not a dang one thing. All <laughs> right. Thank you so much, and I hope you have an amazing Sunday. You too. Y'all take care. Uh, you too. You too. Okay, this is a really good comment. Vandy's Mara said at the time the freak was a dance, because when they left this comment, I remember they did. I was speaking about the marketing of Freaknik, an academia on, on a academic campus of Freaknik. It just I can't even believe that administrators let that ride. But I mean, I guess things were way more lax back in the day for you to be on campus holding a quote Freaknik, freaky picnic. Like what the hell? I feel like that marketing was problematic, but again, not an excuse. Like there's nobody could, that could be pulled into the interrogation room or the courtroom and say, I took a woman's, I took away her consent because it was called the Freaknik, right? Like, that's not a reason, but I do feel like the marketing was problematic. And Vanity's Mara said, at the time, the freak was a dance. And I'm like, you know what? That's fair. That's definitely fair. But there was still no thought into how that word would or could evolve. And as Black people, we got to be extra careful with that, right? Like, even the girls gone wild documentary and those producers and videographers they realized i'm filming these very young college girls and then they realized some of them ain't even in college i'm recording them having i gotta get out of here because this is child you know da 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 you gotta realize how 
certain things may evolve. Yeah, there was a dance called the freak back in the day. First of all, back in the day, quiet as kept, <clears throat> they had better metaphors for how they used to do stuff in the music, right? Like back in the day, we had that song. What was it? This song? Uh, you were dancing real close, pole coming through on you. Now, girl, I know you felt it, but boy, you know I can't help. And I was in middle school when that song came out. I had no clue what I was singing, but I knew every word, okay? Because that metaphor was tight, okay? Now, Pope coming through, okay, you might say it's obvious now as an adult, but as, as a child, now, they don't even have metaphors no more, okay? It's, I want to fuck you in the bathroom. I fuck you out of water running. Like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Like you had to find a way to talk about sex and intimacy and romance and relationships via metaphor so that you could get your whole song listened to and played on the radios on, in syndication as opposed to now you listen to this music about romance and intimacy and, and everybody bleep, 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 bleep. Listen to the song. It's all bleeps. Like, damn, where the words at? Where the, where the, where the words at? Ain't no words. So they had different metaphors back in the day. So, you know, we can't ever act like the freak, even though, yeah, it was a dance, but come on now. Freaky has always met freaky. Dance or no dance. They could have made, made a Cupid shuffle to it, an electric slide with it, a booty call dance with it, a tootsie roll with it, a butterfly with it. Any dance, you name it, they could have made it. But guess what? Freak ultimately a lady in the streets but a freak in the bed we all you know what i mean like you know what i mean like you know just just a small level of accountability with marketing fuck all that i think you need a big accountability with, uh, with everything like nowadays they just like fuck the freak let's call it a slut walk and, and then they want to argue it's... about calling them, you know so I think I think the marketing was problematic. I, I, I think the marketing could have been done a bit better. That, that's that's what I'll say. That's just me. Shout out to how you say this name, Bestui Bed Stewie BK. Thank you for joining the membership. Okay, there's somebody else that joined as well. Alien Pony, I like that. Alien Pony, that reminds me of the movie Nope. Okay. Really good movie by Jordan Peele. Took me two times to watch to understand, but shout out to you. Thank you for joining, okay? They had better, you know, Teddy Pendergrass and Barry White and Al Green and all, like, they, they had better metaphors back in the day. Nowadays, we just don't care. We finna talk about it. We finna talk about it. And it's, it's, mm, mm. I couldn't even believe my mother was letting me sing some of these songs, but I don't know if she was reverse engineering them or not, but it sounded like they was just like singing about squares and triangles, right? When really they were talking about eggplants and water emojis, okay? And the peach. Right, W-A-P. They would have never said that back in the day. Turn off the light, light a can. I mean, that's all about foreplay. But now they be like, let's get horny, I'm ready to... Like, you ain't got to say, let's get horny, I'm ready to... You can say, turn off the light and light a candle instead. Oh, hood. <laughs> it was so different back in the day. Oh, I miss that. I miss that. I miss that era. I really do. I really do. What are your thoughts about Freak Nick? Was you that disciple of God? Let's get down. Let's, let's interrogate you. I just told you. What, I was not there back then. I wasn't around. Are you sure? Years. I'm a young buck. Are you, you let's pinky swear. If you in there, you buck. owe me. You owe me five hundred dollars if you was there. <laughs> Are you you serious? I'm I serious. The way I was. I'm serious. <laughs> if I'm 25 now, I damn sure wouldn't dare back then. She. <laughs> Maybe my big sister might have been. Hey, look, she 35, 36. She might have been. She might have been there, but I wasn't. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Y'all can y'all put some other songs that are metaphors in the chat real quick. Put some, what 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 other old song from the nineties, maybe even late eighties, that was metaphor before we got to the whole. I know who was there back then though. Is. Who? You know they uh, like crazy bitches, Jaguar. Oh yeah. 
It's like, no, let me stop. But we got to the nine nines and the two thousands, and we just lost our mind. So you working with some nah, bad bad yeah, yeah, making a nigga. It was just a hot mess. Hot ass mess. You're making it hard for yes, that... you're making it hard for me. For and I'm like, I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking she playing hard to get. You know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking she playing like, I like you, but I'm not about to give you my number. Like, but. As I grew up and I realized you're making it hard for me, I said, oh. Yeah, I fuck with the music back in the day. I, I don't know about this music this, this day and age, man. She's a brick. Hi, okay. Oh. <laughs> nice and nice <laughs> you making it hard for me. Oh, yes, you can ring my bell. You can ring my, my bell. bell. <laughs> Ring, ring we can go mother. much further back than that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I get so weak in that. At least Lil Wayne did have something with Lollipop. You're right. Shawty swing my way. Hey, you show sure look good to me. Now won't you please <laughs> swing my way. Yeah, that was a good one. 112. Oh, Peaches and Cream was a good one, too, because you couldn't tell me it was... Because think about it. Think about it right now, y'all. Cl clear your minds of all the nasty thoughts. It's Sunday. You heathens! You heathens! Clear your mind. Real quick, just think about this. Cut up a peach into six parts, like it's an apple. Six pieces. And think about Cool Whip. Cool Whip sit to the side. To, to the side like that. And think about your six pieces of peach. You can even take the skin off if you want. Some people can't get down with it. Hey, baby, I can eat kiwi skin, right? That's just me. But think about that snack. Think about that kiwi, uh, no, the peach, the peach, the peach cut in, in, in sixes. And you dip it in some whipped cream. You couldn't tell me when I was in middle school, they wasn't talking about that peach cut up in six pieces and some cool whip. Come to find out, they was talking about... They was, they was trying to get to the yams, sweet yams, okay? But I thought it was about, because I thought about the jello in the container in school when you would go through lunch, the jello with the fruits in it, and then it would like have some pears and grapes and whatever, and then they would put a little dollop of whipped cream on the top. I thought they was talking about that, you know? And so I learned all the words about that delicious snack. And that's what I thought that peaches and cream was about. But turns out it wasn't. So <laughs> that's not what it was about. Uh-uh, not somebody said. Let me go get... Now you need to go in time out and don't come out until Tyra says so. Okay. Cause you out of pocket. But yeah, I thought that peaches and cream was about a snack whole time. It was about the sound of mixing up macaroni. Mm. It was about mixing up that macaroni. Okay. So it was, it was, it was a lot of stuff. Do you remember the time? Okay, yeah, that's a good one too. Um, <laughs> you know what though? All jokes aside, though, all jokes aside, no, because they they put what did they put? Keep it on the down low. That don't sound like anything outside of what it is. But ignition, though, it do sound like bitch. I'm about to get my first car. Okay, I'm about to. <laughs> you ain't gonna be able to tell me nothing when I put my key in that new car. I'm 16. I got my. I done upgraded from my permit to my license. Okay. I'm about to drive off and pick up all my friends. I gotta be honest about ignition. No. It, it, you, at first, when you, it, the double entendre, <laughs> the double entendre, 
within that. Okay. And so I, I, I gotta be fair. You know, I, I don't like the man. I don't like what he's done, but I've got to be fair. Oh, how about TLC red light special? Do the red light special. Yes, it's Raina Men was definitely a thing. They put an SWV downtown. Okay. Okay. It's a lot of stuff going on. We're gonna have a lot of songs. Uh <laughs> uh. We gonna have a lot of good songs in the in the chat. Oh yes, Rain was a good one too. SWV Rain, Honey by Mariah Carey. Creep was a good one too. I was young when that came out. I had no clue what they were talking about until I grew up and I realized. All right, uh, not too much on me though. Not too. Let's keep it on the artist. He said, "Honey by Mariah Carey." How about "Stay the Night" by Mariah Carey? <laughs> oh, okay. Usher my way. As That's my shit. I ain't gonna lie. Anita Howard free. You may oh yes. You make my love come down. Yes. Oh, you make my love come down. Y'all is covered. Oh man, I know that like the back of my hand. My mother used to play that all the time. <laughs> oh yes, rain. Yes. So a soft and missy rain. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we just getting into it. We need to have a karaoke night one night. And we're going to have a winner that wins $50 for real. Tweet to Missy Elliott. Oh, my. You're right. That was around. That was. I was in grade school, too. Had no clue what they were talking about, but learned every word and every ad lib. Yes, I did. Oh, my. Ooh. No. How old was I? Mm, it still sounded kind of innocent. Cassie, me and you. Yeah, I've been waiting. Usher nice and slow. Yeah, you're right. It's seven o'clock on the dot. I'm in the drop top. Stroke you up. I don't mind. Do you mind if I stroke you down all through the night? <laughs> okay, use the chat to make your playlist. Somebody said, I'm making my playlist mm -hmm. right now. Okay. Make I ain't gonna hold you when you said me and you. I thought about that, Raphael. Just me and you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Me and you, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Back in the day, they used to, yeah, they used to really get into it. TLC ain't too proud to beg. Oh, that is one. I ain't too proud to beg. Music today wasn't a lot on TV and the radio and the milkshake. Milkshake is a really good one. That's a really good one. My milkshake brings all the boys. To, and then the music video was just like, okay, she's in the shop. Okay. You grow up and you realize that milkshake is that... <laughs> it's, the milkshake is <laughs> mm -hmm. all the boys in the yard for why girl how many people you let sample that thing how many people you let sample that milkshake damn not all the boys coming to the yard because they know about your milkshake have they heard about it or have they experienced it or tasted it what's going on Khalees at this point you're under investigation let's put you on the docket you came for Beyonce let's go ahead and What's going on? They said me make a playlist, child. <laughs> oh, Would You Mind by Janet Jackson was a good one, too. Yes, 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 yes. Little Corvette. Mm-hmm. Butter Love was a good one, too. Now, Say It by Neo. Say It by Neo is a bit too explicit to wonder what he's talking about. I feel like in my mind, for me, maybe I was just, I was either, what year was that? I was either coming out of high school or in college during that time. And um, yeah, I, maybe I was too old to be like, like ignorant or adolescent to what it meant. But I feel like I had to be at least between 17 and I don't know, man, that song is explicit to me. I didn't had many a good nights based off of that. So, you know, I'm thinking about the mirror. I'm thinking about that Neo song called Mirror, but they're both on the same album, though. Once you know what one song mean off that Neo album, you know what all the rest of them mean. Okay? I got another one for you. Which Ready one? for the world. Ready for the world. Oh, 
Oh, Sheila. Mm. Who's that by? Ready for the world. That's the name of the group? Yeah. I'm too old with y'all. I'm too old. Khalees told us work it by Missy Elliott. How Shake damn me 10 years younger than you? <laughs> and I know about I all that shit. I don't know. I See, because a lot of stuff, I remember the songs, but not the artists from back and what my people was listening to in the 90s. Candy Shop by 50 Cent. I will say that. Candy Candy Shop by uh, by 50 Cent. And I forget that other woman's name that was featured in there. Yeah, that, that's a good one, too, actually. I take you to the candy shop. I let you, you know, you might not, you really might not know what that's about. Um, so yeah, hold on. Three six mafia slot. Huh? Oh, let me see what year that came out. Hold on. What year did All right. what year did slab or my let me look at this up? Ah, I can't even believe that I'm Googling this. I'm embarrassed by this Google search. 19. Oh, yeah, I was definitely a child. I didn't know what the hell that shit came out in 1999. Slop on my knob, like corn on the cob. Check in with me and your job. Late on the bed. And give me yes, I absolutely didn't know what that meant. Yeah, you're right. Oh my god. See, I was I was eight. I the embarrassment. Oh Lord, have mercy! <laughs> oh, At least I can. The music was good back then. It, Compared it, it, to it now, was, it was. Many A lot of music was, now, and they got the money as fuck. It's crazy. I'm ready by Tevin Cam. Ready or not, so I can do, go deep. Child, it's it's the playlist box for me. Let me tell you something. If you're still here watching the video on the replay, go through the live chat and get your playlist together, okay? Because I couldn't bring them all up on screen. But baby, they are getting us together with what we need to go back in time in a time capsule and really experience what the times were, okay? Go through it. Like I said, as you comment on this and all of my videos, Make sure you leave a timestamp to whatever it is that you're commenting about. If you're commenting at the two hour and 46 minute mark, put it, <laughs> put it down there, comment so I know exactly what you're talking about and everybody else too. Honey. Oh, you know what? What year did yeah, there's one last song I'm gonna say before. Sing. I got one more. I feel like I was such a child. I feel like okay. So I knew I was right. Oh, Ludacris, what's your fantasy? That's a good one, too. That's a good one, too. Oh, my goodness. Yes, Splash Waterfall. Make love to me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, y'all are taking me back. Okay. So, y'all remember when Call Tyrone came out? I was six. But it was the jam, right? It wasn't until, and of course I learned all the words. You know, when your parents listen to a song over and over and over and over and over again, Hillary Duff Come Clean, first of all, that's my joint. Don't get me started. Okay, yes. She was on Disney Channel at that time, so I didn't know what that meant. But I grew up to realize what that meant. But Call Tyrone, right? I was six. It came out in 1997, Okay. And yeah, I learned every word because you know it's easy to learn all the words and whatever ad libs to the songs that your parents listen to over and over again and stuff that's playing on the radio. And so when you grow up and realize what Call Tyrone was really was about, whoa, <laughs> whoa, I said, damn, not an ancient nigga. 
yin yang twins. Wait, just wait till you see my you know what's, you know what's funny, ahead. Jane? What? Every time I tell somebody my name, somebody always singing that goddamn song. Well, they better call on you. Oh, baby got back, <laughs> so it's a lot. I feel like baby got back. You had to have known what that was about. I, I can't remember when I got hit to that song, but I did end up learning. Every, I feel like you got to know it's about butts. Baby got back. <laughs> Call 1900 Mix a lot. It kicked those nasty thoughts. Baby got back. Because Fonda ain't got no motor in the back of her Honda. My Anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hon. You could do side bends or sit ups, but please don't lose that butt. <laughs> You got to know who the hell Sir Mixalize is. <laughs> you got to. I wish I never met her, Carl Thomas. He was talking about sleeping around with a married woman. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From the windows to the wall. If you were listening to the edited version, it was. What was the edited version? Because all I remember is the explicit one, but I do. From the windows to the wall. To the. I can't remember what the edited version was. To the sweat drop down my bottle. Jolly crawl. I can't remember what the edited version was. Some of the uh, Pretty Ricky stuff was very censored as well. Um. Some of the pretty Ricky stuff was censored as well, but I feel like you could kind of get the you you got the grasp, especially if you've seen the music video. Pretty Ricky fell on that cusp of we not even trying to hide this no more. They might make an explicit version just to get radio spins, but as a group, they weren't even trying to hide it to like what they were talking about. Like, who was it? Pretty I remember getting out of school one day. And walking up the street to Best Buy to buy Pretty Ricky's album. Like, because that was when you actually had to be dedicated to your artist. Like, there was no iTunes. There was no, I'm not that old, y'all. Chill on me. Ch ch I ch I you I Don't make me kick you off my bus. Chill on me. Boy, that little nigga trying to call you old. <laughs> but... But I've lived to see some things and music wasn't always as easily as accessible as it is now. Now, if I need to kick you off because you calling me old, just say the word, babe. Just say Your the word. asses, I'll get the stepping. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Okay, your yeah, pony is a good one too by Genuine because you... As a child, yeah, as a child, I, I didn't know what he was talking about. Just seemed like he was a, in a fairy tale, and I'm like, ponies are in fairy tales, right? You, child, yeah. We has we we got some good stuff going on. We got some good stuff going on in this head chat, okay? So, oh, ski ski. Boys, the men has some stuff too. Ah. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, they had that whole song full of moaning. Boys and Men had a whole song full of nothing but sexual moans. <laughs> Basically, yes, I remember that song. Yeah, but they were so much more suave. So much more suave with it, okay? Um, But yeah, the <laughs> Joe to see. All right. This was such a good show. Any last words um, that you have, Disciple of God, about Freak Nick holding your counterparts accountable? Some, some black men being upset at the um, at the release of Freak Nick based off of how it will portray all black men. What do you think? Um, hold on, Aiden. Hold on. I'm about to finish feeding you. Uh, like I said, it starts. Like I said, definitely need a lot of accountability in our community, but it starts with the men, specifically those predator men. Yeah, that's all I really got to say about it. And appreciate you for having me out here, though. No As problem. Always. <laughs>
thank you for coming up. Thank you for supporting. I saw the video that you did. I'm always supporting. Um, I, I appreciate it. I know that no you. Way. I'm you, a, I'm you a, Maryland, a Maryland native. I saw the video that you did about um, uh, what's uh, uh, Alley Cat wrong. I saw the video you did about that. <laughs> about <laughs> that. And her cover for me, or whatever the case is. So I definitely. I'm I'll not playing with her. <laughs> Niggas know what's up when they when they come to Baltimore. <laughs> Bitches know what's up when they come to Baltimore too. Absolutely, absolutely. It meant a lot. Oh, want, yeah. Oh, yeah, she shut the fuck up. Simple as that. And, and, and now she's sitting in jail because she feel like better us than nothing, <laughs> nothing she says online you know, is punishable by. Up. Law, but it is punishable by law, so you know it is what it is. <laughs> like but, I said, like I said, better us than Krishan. Uh, I think Krishan will wake up one day, but it'll be she will, it'll be long for me. Hopefully, she wakes up before something bad happens. I feel like she's a horrible representative for our city. Um, but she, she is. Hopefully, before it's too late, right? Like, I've been in an abusive relationship before, so people be like, just leave, just it. And I get, I get, it ain't that easy. It's, it's never, it's never that easy. The control and that I've they have, it with my parents, it's they, never that easy. They be the, intel, the intel they have over your life, your family, your surroundings, your job, it's easy for them to follow or intimidate you. And if they don't do it, they'll have someone else do it. Like it's really never that simple. It's it's a lot more psychological than anything. And telling people to leave forcibly rather than I guess just being there for them, letting them know that this ain't the best for you, but not girl, leave. Sometimes it's, just, it's like it's like I remember when my mother was telling me when I was 12, no boys, no boys allowed. I said mm -hmm. no boys. The boys are to the left. You over to the right. No boys allowed. I'm, bitch, I'm running to I'm running to these niggas. I, I was my hormone, you know what I'm saying? No, like it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Not to to put business out there. Like I said, it ain't easy to lead these domestic relationships. They yeah. as they as was, was so domesticated since this man had came home in 2012 and they still got married and still domesticated. It's that pain with her ass no more. It's the other way around now. Instead yeah. of just both of them. Is it her now? Because of insecurities and stuff like that. Like I said, ma, in case you watching, I don't mean to put your business out there. I love you to death, but you know I'm telling the truth. Pops, you too. Child, let's hope that let's hope they not watching. But... I honestly don't give a fuck if they watching. But they put that out there anyway. <laughs> it is what it is. But no, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you for being a legit day one supporter of mine. It really does. Always. It does. Shit. I hope you have a good Sunday. Um, I'm you getting too. ready to go figure out dinner. I hope you have, you and your household have an amazing dinner and are able to reset for the week to give Always. all you need to get to school. Down, work. My boy is feeding a little man. He cussed me out right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you next time. All right. All right. Somebody said Michael Jackson. Wonder what you meant by I want to rock with you. I mean, what did he mean by that? What did he? What did he? What did he really mean by that? He could have. He could have meant a plethora of things. A plethora of things. Um. So let me see. Okay. So, all right. I think that this was a, this, this, was this not a good live? Okay. I think that this was an amazing live stream. I thought I was going to have time to, um, I thought I was going to, and thank you for all the hearts. I know some people have this upgrade where they can put like hit hearts or put whatever in the chat. Thank y'all so much for that. Okay. This video already has over 5,000 views. That's lit. Thank you all so much. I knew I had to break away from Jag. Am I going to talk about her from time to time? Yes. 
But I'm like, I'm not about to build my channel off of her back. Like, absolutely. That I have to be able to talk about other things as well. And I'm glad that you all were able to be here and engage in a conversation about other things, plaguing our community, piquing our interest, um, very controversial. Uh, and we can all just meet in one spot and talk about how does the freak Nick make you feel? Are you with the release of this or are you opposed to this? Are you afraid of it being released because it might paint your friends, your buddies, you, whoever, um, in a different light? And and these were the, some of the things that I wanted to touch on. And in closing, there is a lawsuit a group of five prominent Black women, they're actually planning to file a lawsuit in Atlanta in federal court <laughs> in an attempt to block the release of Hulu's new documentary on the debauchery that filled the Freak Nick event. So it was an annual spring break festival, as I told you all earlier. In the 90s, it was primarily attended by students from HBCUs, and it began in 1983 as a small picnic. Um, in a public park near the Atlanta University Center, it's sponsored by the D.C. Metro Club for students who couldn't afford to return home during spring break. Within a few years, it, grew, it grew into an annual event. Now, many of these college students who attended at that time, they're in their 40s and 50s and in the prime of their careers. Five women are so concerned about the documentary and what it will reveal about their past that they've hired a law firm and they are filing a lawsuit to block the release of the film. Now, the five women include a politician, three high-level corporate executives, and a judge. All of the women are taking legal action anonymously, okay? And so one of the women, like I said, is a C-suite executive. It makes north of $1 million a year. She's married. She has three children. She explained that this puts her in an unflattering light, and she's hoping to have the courts to block its release. So there is a lot happening pertaining Touch Me Tease Me is a good one. Touch Me Tease Yeah, it's a good one. So there's a lot there's a lot that's happening surrounding the release of or, you know, the presumed release of this documentary. And I'm curious to know how you all feel about it. I feel like it's going to be shedding light on a lot of things. But there are a lot of people that are still, still very triggered by what may or may not appear in said documentary. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with this. And I probably should have played this earlier, but there's so much to cover here. I think I did a pretty good job, especially making it interactive and keeping it focused. Wait a minute. Let's go ahead. And... Okay, and thank you all for hitting thumbs up. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'm not quite sure what you're waiting for, but you probably want to stop waiting and subscribe right now for more syrup in the form of black news and celebrity entertainment, okay? Because I'm always going to keep my finger on the needle of things that are happening to, around, and about the black community. I'm always more than likely going to be having difficult conversations that a lot may, uh, that a lot of people may misinterpret. But let's take a look. I'm trying to get out of the car and walk to a McDonald's to eat. Well, we kind of wanted to just see what was going on. Couldn't get Student Stacy Lloyd describes going out with her roommate and, uh, after getting off a restaurant job. Remember all that freaknik traffic? She suggests traffic was part of a series of events that led to finding herself someplace she hadn't set out to be and in trouble. When some guy jumps into the driver's, side, driver's seat of the car. So we start fighting in the car. I'm going like this and drilling him in the chest and in the in the face with my feet and so someone opens up the passenger door and pulls me out of the car and they drag me on the ground they were my skirt my underwear was ripped one of my sisters she had her um she had guys reaching up under her dress you know trying to fill and everything i had my dress ripped off 
and um, my my roommate, she had her chest bonded with and everything. And then my other sister, you know, we was, she was fighting and one guy hit her in the head with a bottle. I started screaming like, help, help. At this time, they just started attacking us, you know, tearing off my sweater. My friend got behind me because she's smaller than me. So by this point in time, they done pushed us to over here. It seemed like the crowd was getting bigger and bigger. Just full of guys over here thinking a freak show going on, and it's not. I mean, I have bruises in my skin from the marks where the guys... Right there, that's from what happened. Right. And the door was locked. The force of the crowd was so that they pushed us through this door. It broke the glass door. We were so nervous and scared that we couldn't crank up the car. And so the policemen came. Everybody, when they heard the siren, everybody just, like, scattered. The only thing that saved me from getting raped was a man yelled out police. Heaven sent. I, I, you know, I assume. It was this one guy, and wherever he may be at, may God bless you, because, I mean, he was like, you know, it was just him, and the guy was trying to, like, get him and throw him out the way. He was still in between me and my girlfriends. It was like, you know, y'all calm down. You know, they ain't like that. They ain't like that. Go somewhere else. Where and it was like, I don't, you must have been an angel. So, you know, for people who pretend like this behavior didn't transpire, right? You got a couple of angles that people look at it. Like, oh, this didn't happen. Okay, well, then you get down to the, the testimonies of people who experienced and witnessed it. It's, well, shouldn't have been dressed like that. Then you get into the, well, you shouldn't have been there. there's so many blaming tactics instead of really blaming people who are ripping clothes off of women and dragging women out of vehicles in order to do what they are unable to do when they can get consensual cootie cat, right? There's so much blaming of the, 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 the female attendees rather than blaming the people in which it actually that that actually engaged in this type of predatory behavior is sickening. It's sickening. We go from talking about why were you dressed like that? Why were you there? And the, the gaslighting begins. That didn't happen. Then we pull it out in 240p. 200. Because it wasn't 8K, wasn't 4K, wasn't even 2K or 1000K. It was 240 pixels, right? We bust out the footages, and then, and then we get into more excuses. First, you said it didn't happen. Then we get into it happening, and you're, you know, it, 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 it's a lot. Bottom line is, none of this was okay. None of this was okay. None of, you know, for, for the people who were victims of 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 grape minus the G, and SA, um, they shouldn't have had to endure that based off of of showing up and wanting to have have a good time. But I also won't let up off of the fact that the marketing was pretty problematic and the subconscious things that it sent through people's minds when they heard the name of the event, a freaky picnic. It's like hide and go freak. Hide and go seek is one thing, but hide and go freak was freak me. What's it mean? What's it mean? What's it mean? What's it mean? I feel like the marketing was problematic, right? Is it solely to blame? Is it to blame at all? No, but I do feel like it was a contributing factor to helping people understand that this is a big sex fest, not a sexy fest, but a sex fest. And I do feel like the marketing was a little problematic. And, you know, that's my opinion. Everybody may not agree. Um, there was, I think like a per there was a person who called in who didn't agree. And, you know, she, she left, but we had our respectful difference of opinion. And all in all, I think that all of the callers contributed something to the show, especially the one that disagreed. And like, why are we showing this? We don't need this. People just want clout. And I'm like, the girls gonna wow people. They want clout too. Yeah, they want clout. And I'm like, people should have the right to talk about predatory situations, spread awareness about everything that contributed to it. Because again, if we combine all of the elements that made up Freaknik in 1994, nearly 30 years ago, that would happen all over again. 200,000 people, three dozen cops, sexual, overt sexual marketing, 
crowds gone wild. It would happen again. So what's to be learned? How to organize an event and how to demonize your homies when they do stuff like this. Because a lot of them are still in denial that stuff like this happens at all. Okay? At all. Okay? So that's that. I see my moderators are working. Let me see. This person said, go with your boyfriend or husband that y'all claim is supposed to protect you from men. Yeah, because when people are in college, they totally have husbands. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you sitting up here being sarcastic instead of taking anything serious. Oh, but all y'all said y'all married and y'all got boyfriends and husbands. How about them? Let them protect you. I mean, you in here wilding out being sarcastic, knowing damn well people in college, a lot of people in college are single. Or dating and shuffling through boyfriends or people that court them, right? So the fact that you're in here acting like this and turning up wild like this, it's, it's giving very much hit dog hollering. It's giving very much, nigga, you a predator. You gonna be on the tapes? Is your son gonna be on the tapes? Was your daddy on the tapes? Somebody in your lineage is on these goddamn tapes. There'd be no reason for you to be this this, this much of a hit dog and hollering. This goddamn loud, baby. It's given very much you're on the tapes. It's given. Survey says you're on the tapes. We found you. We found you. We found you on the tapes and the tape's not even out yet, baby. Baby, the tapes ain't even released yet. And there you are. On them. Okay. He on the tapes. Baby, go ahead and tap dance on the thumbs down button because you hate it. You hate the accountability. You taking the accountability of black of, of, of predators, even if they're black, you're taking it personal. Hit the thumbs down button because I know you over there angry. You, you still over there trying to type. My moderator's already handled. You still over there trying to type. Baby, hit that thumbs down button because I know you want to. Because little do you know, hitting that thumbs down button actually still helps the video out. It lets people, it lets YouTube and the algorithm know people are getting emotional about this video. And whether they like it or not, we're going to push this video through the algorithm. So hit the button, bitch. Hit it. Hit it again. Hit it again for me. Hit it one time. Hit it. Okay. <laughs> He really thought he was coming through here, Julia. I thought, I thought all y'all was married, though. Yes. In 94, everybody had a boyfriend that was married if they were in college. Right? 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 What happened? <laughs> anyway, there were actually lots of problematic comments throughout this video. However... I wasn't able to get to all of them. And I feel like that's progress. Not only is God keeping me focused on all of the callers who called in, which kept me away from the fucked up commenters, most of them. I think I responded to two of them. But the first one, I actually got them to agree with me on something, but whatever. Um, God is working. Okay, he's right Sunday. God is working through me. Do you hear? He's working. He's totally working through me, you know? Um, and sometimes negative comments can be a learning experience, but other times they don't need that type of attention. But this one was a bit of a laughing stock, this last one. Um, so yeah, that's great. I love you all so much. I would give you all a sticky note, but we are going on three hours and 40 minutes. And I have dinner obligations and I'm late. <laughs> I'm late to my dinner obligations. Please share this video. I'm going to try to cut this video up in the best way I can. I have no clue how I'm going to do it. Um, please excuse my absence over the last week. I have a new computer coming in, y'all.
I'm organizing my space and my desk. I spent over $3,000 on upgrading my whole electronic situation here. Mac Mini, four terabytes, hella RAM. I can't even begin to tell y'all. Did it hurt to make that investment? Yes, but it's necessary. I'm working on little to no memory here and I need to bring y'all the best experience. And sometimes I can't be as consistent as I want to be because I don't have the memory that I need to do what I need to do and import all of my clips, okay? Some people are saying, thanks, Jen. You're welcome. Because I used to get caught up on negative comments so much to the point where I would get comments of people holding my feet to the fire. Like, Jane, why did you spend 15 minutes on a troll? Like, that's unacceptable. I expect more from you. You're, you're way too intellectual. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> you're right. There's way too many notes and so much planning that I put into planning these videos to let a troll come ruin it. Now, while I use a troll to get a good minute and a half, maybe two of laughter, yeah, but it should not go on for 10, 15 minutes. Like it really shouldn't. So I do have stickies in my bunch who be holding me accountable based on what they do and don't think is acceptable. Now, for those who were upset at me responding to Jaguar right in the last video, you just won't you just won't get it, right? Do I have a potty mouth sometimes? Absolutely. Did I stand up for myself against a mangy twangy alley cat incorrect? Wrong? Yes, you might not agree with how I did it, but I did it. And that's that. I mean, you will either gonna get over it or you aren't. A lot of people are like, this channel was changed. Jane's character is something. No, y'all heard me cursing like a sailor because I had the sailor of all sailors, insane, by the way, who is in jail right now, um, try to call me out, punk me, bitch me. Bitch, don't ever speak my name again. Oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. And some people may not agree with it because they expect me to be this intellectual butterfly goody two shoe all day long, baby. Talk to my mother with that shit. That's what she expect all the time, right? That's not an all the time thing for me. But if you don't get it, you don't get it. It's cool. Sometimes you just got to get flat out Baltimore Street on you, bitch. What you thought this was? You thought it was cute and dainty over here all the time? No, it's not. I'm going to stand up for me. I'm going to stand up for my platform. And I'm going to stand up for YouTube. You wasn't out here shooting in the gym where YouTube is thinking that you run these streets. You don't run these streets. We've been here for far longer than a decade. You got here because you thought you could get some notoriety, but you're not even getting no money, which lets me know that you don't know how to work this arena, that you act like you're the queen of, you're the queen of YouTube. Maybe you're the queen of the jail cell in the insane asylum. That's what you're the queen of, but let me go ahead and get up on you, okay? That's what you are the queen of. You make the queen of these parts. Anybody, first of all, anybody that calls themselves the queen of YouTube, you're automatically not the queen. You're not. That's for the people to decide. There is nobody that's a queen or a king of YouTube that's calling themselves that because you got to be humble in order. You have to possess some humility in order to get there. Do some people call me the queen of YouTube? Yes. But that's what being humble is about, taking certain compliments and not repeating them. Rich people don't call themselves rich. They live that lifestyle and it exudes, period. Right? I will never call myself the queen of YouTube, but I will accept people that call me that. Some things you got to let the people to decide and the people reign on. And that's just that. Okay? Do you catch the queen of any castle, really? I'm the queen. Like, that's not how it go. Especially when we're talking about shit that's not really a royal situation. No, 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 no. She's still in jail. Yeah, you know her and Lasagna, they broke up. They broke up, baby. <laughs> they said she the queen of cell block H. Okay. Queen of the convicts. <laughs> Please. Oh my gosh, I'm late. Um, I love you all so much. I will give you all a sticky note, but let me see. We'll be back at work tomorrow. We got to talk about R. Kelly tomorrow. There was some other stuff that I wanted to speak about. Um, 
there was some other stuff that I wanted to speak about as well today, but it I clearly don't have the time to do it. And yo, my computer is walling out on me. I can't even show y'all the thumbnail of what I was trying to talk about. Um, what I was trying to talk about. I thought I was going to do three shows today, but this one ran long. But anyway, I love you all so much, okay? Kings and queens are conquerors, okay? Um, I was today years old when I found out she was on Jay-Z's song Cry. Yeah, she was. That's, that, that's her claim to fame. That is her claim to me. Okay. Am I missing something in the baby? Because it is going on. Oh, okay. Got you. I love you all so much. I'm sending y'all positivity vibes and all that stuff as always. Get ready for the week. Um, make sure you spend at least 15 minutes with yourself alone in a room. Meditate. Create some affirmations. Make you out a goal list. Even if throughout this whole next seven days, today included, you only put three, three goals. Make you a list. Manifest some things. I've been working on my mental health since um, I've been away. And um, it works when I stay consistent with it. If I take two two days off of prioritizing my mental health, then I feel like I see it in the increased scatterability of my thoughts, if that makes sense. So y'all know I love y'all. Y'all also know I have a hard time saying goodbye, but I have to say goodbye. I love y'all so much. I'm gonna catch y'all in the next video. Hit thumbs up. <laughs> If you're looking for a way to support the show, make sure you hit thumbs up or you can send a cash app to dollar sign T-H-A. Plain is Jane. It's right here on the screen. Don't forget to double check. And um, before you send a cash app, if you do, if not, you don't have to support the channel in a monetary way. Just make sure you hit thumbs up on the video and you subscribe to the channel. I'm always going to be here giving you all the best of the best. Um, black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy y'all know i was mentioned in um in what's it called an msn an msn article let me just show y'all that real quick let me go ahead and get out of here i did mean to show that to y'all so some people thought or assumed let me make this a little bit bigger some people thought or assumed that um that kanye west was in was at Freaknik based off this video and listen that definitely looks like Kanye West but he has a flip phone so you can see no jumper posted it rare footage of Kanye West front row at Freaknik back in the day they didn't do any research Kanye at Freaknik doesn't surprise me at all have y'all listened to his early music okay and here we go Kanye West was not at Freaknik. Like, did you see the flip phone he had in his hand? Like, that's what it was. This is a flip phone, y'all. A flip phone. Kanye was not at Freaknik. In 1994, there were no freak phones. Now, does he look like he wishes he could be somewhere else? Yes. But does the woman also look like? She could be somewhere else, or she wants to be somewhere else. Well, uh, absolutely, okay. But well, baby, yes, <laughs> you know, your girl tweets, they be they, they be going viral, they be on these pages, they be on the shade room, they be on the neighborhood talk, they be on MSN, all these different articles. Give your girl her thing, she be in, in more places than just the New York Times, as this article would have it, okay. So, you know. I just want to let y'all know. Let me get this little tired twerking mama off the screen. She's so tired of twerking. Let's get her off the screen real quick. All right. I love y'all. I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Y'all say beautiful, black, and blessed. Um, catch some of the older content if you haven't already. If you didn't watch me laughing and gagging and responding to Jaguar when she called me out and said, don't ever talk about me again. Don't ever put my name in a title again. Don't ever put me on your thumbnail again. And bitch, I did all three. Go watch it. Get caught up on Jaguar, right? I will talk to you all later today. And y'all say beautiful, black, and blessed. Okay? Deuces. Hey.
Roll us on your wrist a plain giant. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen. Or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.